Bama A&M is a competitor for a SWAC championship, and it all begins here today against Division II Morehouse trying to put together back-to-back -back winning seasons. We are in Canton, Ohio, and this is the inaugural Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic on NFL Network. It is the NFL's 100th season. This is the Pro Football Hall of Fame where pro football was born. And this is now also the home of the Black College Football Hall of Fame. Born in Atlanta, but now here in Canton with a ribbon cutting yesterday. And we have a classic for you today on a holiday weekend with Alabama A&M from the SWAC and Division II Morehouse here. This, we hope, is a new tradition, a tradition for many years to come, a classic worthy of the opening weekend in college football. We are flattered and honored to be here and so grateful for all of you for joining us here today in Canton at the Pro Football Hall of Fame on NFL Network. This is Charles Davis. I'm Andrew Siciliano. Steve Weiss is out of the field, and he will join us a little bit later. This game is all about the Black College Football Hall of Fame, all about Charles Davis, the HBCUs, and it has been a fantastic week. And it has been phenomenal, as you've said. Fantastic, phenomenal, momentous. All those words apply. You see these people who have been enshrined. They're here to see the Hall of Fame now officially here in Canton. A lot of pride, and I'm the product of black college football. Raised on it, went to a lot of games when I was younger. My father, Franklin Davis, starting quarterback, Bluefield State in West Virginia. So I know what this is all about. And our partner, Steve Weish, Howard University, part of the capstone. We get it. We're excited to be here. Let's do this thing. It's not just about the history, although this weekend has been about it. It's about these two teams on the field today as they kick off a brand new season. Let's begin with Alabama A&M. And why not, why not start with a team from the SWAC and one of the big boys in the SWAC, and that's their quarterback, Akil Glass. This guy stands strong in the pocket, delivers downfield. Many say he is the best pure passer in the SWAC. And his offensive coordinator, Dwayne Taylor, says to us, he's a poor man's Ben Roethlisberger. He will deliver from the pocket. On the defensive side of the ball, keep an eye on number 20 in Maroon. And that's Armani Holloway. Led the team with 108 tackles last year. When he, led, when he gets to the ball, you hear it all over the stadium. And you may also hear his twin brother, Amari, who is a defensive back. We'll see him as well. Charles, who are we looking at today at Morehouse? Well, let's start with the defending Offensive Player of the Year in the SIAC, and that's their running back, Santo Dunn. This is a guy who can run inside the tackles, even though he's a small guy, and also take it to the house. Think a little bit of a Tariq Cohen type of a player. So when you see him, you'll enjoy watching him play. And then on the defensive side of the ball, They've got a guy in the middle who does so many things off the field that I know that we're going to cover later. This guy's made an impact nationally, but he makes an impact on the field as well, and that's Julian Turner. Led their team in tackles last year. He's a middle linebacker. It's a search and destroy guy. And as Jake Gaither, the Hall of Fame coach, always said, I want my players agile, <laughs> mobile, and hostile. That's Julian Turner. Uh, Julian Turner has a helmet. He is also a man of many hats. We'll talk about his filmmaking career. He's been on Sesame Street. He has been to the White House. He works with Tyler Perry in his free time a little bit later. Rich Freeman in his 13th season here with Morehouse, trying to put together back-to-back -to -back winning seasons, trying to build on that momentum from a year ago. He is here with his Morehouse maroon Tigers and Connell Maynard is the head coach at Alabama A&M, a championship coach and a championship quarterback as well at multiple levels, including the Arena Football League. So we are happy that you are here with us for this one. What a great way to kick off the college football season. Now, right now it's 79. There's a little bit of humidity. I mean, we are in Northeast Ohio. There's certainly some humidity. The hope is that the rain, and I don't want to jinx it, stays away as there could be some thunderstorms later in the evening as we often have in so, these parts. So, so you brought it up. Even though you didn't want to jinx <laughs> it, you brought it up. Morehouse wins the toss and defers. So to kick things off today for Morehouse, it's Fernando Della Mora. And it will be... Alabama A&M 
with the opening kickoff, and that is Gary Quarles with the ball. And Gary Quarles has room, and he is across midfield and across the 40-yard line to get things going. There's a way to start. That's exactly how you want to start. And watch everything going to the right, and look at the blocking scheme. Look at people pick people up. Look at 85 right out in front. A terrific job laying that block. That's Abdul Fatai Ibrahim, a freshman, getting his first action here at Alabama A&M. A walk-on who came to play. And that is a 56-yard return for Gary Quarles, who you might be used to seeing in number 23. He is wearing number 27 today. Yeah, they had a little jersey malfunction, so being that. And Connell Maynard, Andrew, you and I know him well. Don't be surprised with after that return to momentum, he wants to strike very quickly and take a shot. He has Akil Glass, who led the swack in passing yards and touchdowns a year ago. Charles, you mentioned before, a poor men's Ben Roethlisberger. He pulls it out, he fires complete, and he is gone. Zabry and Moore, one play, touchdown. Charles Davis called it. 40 yards. Fifty-six yard kickoff return, forty yard touchdown. With that kind of momentum and kind of the Connell Manor, I know he wants to take that shot early. And there's Zabrian Moore, who's known as a guy who plays above the rim and goes up and gets it, runs an excellent slant route, gets a step and glass right on target and Alabama A&M roars into Canton and takes the early lead and Spencer Corey hits the extra point and that is how we begin we are 15 seconds into this thing and Alabama A&M already has a 7-0 lead look at look at how glass just gets excuse me uh Moore just gets inside of the coverage there that's number 15 Daniel Norman who was trying to match up with him outside and I think they were trying to use Norman for some size because Moore is not a little person he's a big man out on the perimeter but once he got the step inside that was a perfectly thrown football and there was no help in the middle of the field no help on the back side and Moore housed it. Sabrian Moore 6'3 185 he is a junior out of Tuscaloosa one of four players on this team from Paul Bryant High School there in Tuscaloosa and as we are discussing numbers he too were a different number a year ago. Zabrian Moore was 80 when last you saw Connell Maynard's team on the field. Now, today, he is wearing number eight. Well, he shed that second number, made him faster, Andrew. Now he's down to just one number on his jersey, and he takes it to the house. 80 looks like the number of a big time and big sized receiver, which is what Moore is at six foot three. And so, 15 seconds in, Alabama AM has a seven nothing lead. And now, Corey, after that extra point, is set to kick this one away. And we have a whistle, we'll blow it dead. Let's go down to Steve Weiss, the third member of our team on the field. Steve? Well, guys, as we know, we talked to AM head coach Connell Maynard. He said he wanted to strike quick and have explosive plays. And then to open the game with that big kickoff return, and then the 40 yard touchdown pass, that plays right into what they want to do. We know they are a high tempo offense. But they came in and they scored quickly. Did no need to show the tempo. But Maynard told us coming into this game that he wants to show the world that black college football, it can be executed cleanly. No turnovers, no sloppiness. And out of the gate, guys, they showed that they came here to play ball. And that was as, as well executed as it could possibly be. First down from the eight. So clean up the penalty for me, Andrew, and I'll right, we'll get back to what Steve said. Had trouble hearing Larry Smith over the band, but they're backing it up to the eight-yard line. They said the ball was dead for a certain reason, so I don't know if someone, you know, they thought he did a fair catch there. He like, took a knee, but whatever. But get, going back to that last point of Steve's, how they, how, they, how Connell Mina wants his team to play so the world sees it, John Thompson at Georgetown often talked about that with his basketball teams. You know, you see these historically black colleges and universities, oh, we can play with discipline. We can execute well, and we can play a clean game. And that's what he's talking about. A flag for no fair catch there. And now Mike Sims gives it off to his running back out of the backfield. That is number two, Frank Bailey, one of two backs for whom we'll see a lot of work today for Morehouse. Frank Bailey and number one, Santo Dunn. That's good for 13. They were both in the backfield on that first play from scrimmage, and it's going to get him a new set of downs out to the 20. As we look at the Morehouse starting offense, it was Reese Knuckles, number eight, who is a preseason all-conference return man. He was the guy on that opening kickoff. 
Frank Bailey with the carry there. As you look at the offensive line, the number and the guy you want to keep an eye on is that right guard, number 62, J.J. Syriac, the senior out of Durham, North Carolina. Yeah, he's a preseason HBCU All-American, all-conference player, four-year starter. Had a chance to meet him yesterday, fine young man. But you notice with Morehouse, they're coming out with kind of be a, kind of a fast break offense themselves. You already pointed it out, Andrew. Two backs in the backfield, both of their tailbacks. No tight ends on the field, all wide receivers. They're trying to break fast in this game as well. Mike Sims on the preseason watch list for player of the year in the HBCUs. That one goes nowhere. He gave it to Santo Dunn, and he was brought down by number 30. That's Adrian Portlock. It is Adrian Portlock. Thank you, Charles. Yeah, he's one of the safeties now. They, they run a 4-2-5 scheme. Four down linemen, two linebackers, five defensive backs. And Portlock, number 30. Denzel Davis, number 45. And Fletcher, number Desmond Fletcher, number 40. Those three safeties will be active in the close to the line of scrimmage on most running plays. Let's see if that AM defense can now get off the field on third and ten. The lefty drops to throw. Not much of a runner. That ball is out. And we have our first turnover, it looks like. Waiting for the signal. It sure looked like AM fell on it. And, and I, they did. And I think Marcus Kushney, number 57, on the pass rush, knocked the ball free, Andrew. So watch 57 as he gets it through the line of scrimmage. Now here he goes. Here from the backside, actually, Kushney was near it. I think Sims just dropped the football. And then the Alabama AM guys got to the ball, and now they are in business deep. In the Morehouse territory. They're going to take over in the red zone there. So a one-play touchdown drive to start the game after giving up that opening touchdown, or rather that opening first down on the opening play. we got a turnover. And then we have a turnover belt. We had a touchdown belt for Moore on the touchdown. Now the turnover belt there. Maurice Smith wearing it. Wearing it well, 7-0 early. Today's Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic is presented by Toyota. Let's go places. Michael Sims praised by his coaches for not turning the ball over. Only four interceptions a year ago, plus 17 on the turnover margin. However, the fumble there has given Alabama A&M the ball in the red zone and a 7-0 lead as they're back at it. And maybe they go right to the end zone. They do. Glass with the fade to the corner to Abdul Fatai Ibrahim, a walk-on, and they cannot connect. But they went probably the wrong guy to try. The walk-on, Ibrahim, is playing in his first game. Diedrich Vanover, number five, is the best cover corner for Morehouse. And they gave it a shot, but nice coverage by Vanover. Breaking up the play. Vanover is a track guy and a 100 and 200 meter champion. You do not want to try to run with him. Here's Glass. Hands it off. Going nowhere. Bentley dropped in the backfield for a loss of five. Marquise DeWert, number 55, the big guy. Watch this big man make the play at the point of, point of attack, and then he gets right through and totally disrupts the play and drags him to the ground. Julian Turner trying to get a piece of that also, number 44. A junior who came a long way to get here from Bellevue, Washington, 6'1", 275 for Marquise DeWord. Officially, it's a loss of three back to the 22, and it brings up third and 13. They need the nine to keep this drive alive. Heel glass alone to the backfield. Again, going end zone, and again incomplete for Ibrahim. It's going to be fourth down. Missed opportunity there for Alabama and them. They got what they wanted, Andrew. They spread everyone out, five receivers in the pattern, forced them into man-to-man -man coverage. Ibrahim got the step, but Akil Glass overshot the, overshot the mark. And I don't see anyone trotting out there for a field goal just yet, and now we're going to get it. I know Maynard was thinking about it for a little bit. From there, it would be roughly a 40-yard field goal. And that's what we're going for. Now, in warm-ups, we watched Spencer Corey, number 19, bang one through from 50 yards, and it looked good doing it. It looked pretty good. Officially, this one's going to be 39. His career long is 44. And it's going to have to wait. Delay the game. 
kicking team, number 19. Five-yard penalty remains for foul. Larry Smith with a Big Ten crew here calls delay, and they're going to back him up five. Now it's a 44-yard try. Now those are the kinds of plays that should drive a coaching staff crazy. You've got 39-yard field goal attempt. Now you're going to back him up to 44. And when we talked with the coaches going into this, I asked him, what do you trust him up to? He said, well, I trust him up to about 50. So he's well within range, but you don't need to add on to it in that situation. This would tie a career long. Spencer Corey has the distance, but it is no good. Just wide left. So the Bulldogs cannot do anything with that turnover in the red zone. It is seven nothing early here in Canton. Thank you. Is that it? Yeah, that's the total. You sure you beeped everything? I beeped it all. Did you beep this one? Yep, beeped it. And you beeped this? Beeped it. You beeped that? Good and beeped. And this? Beeped it. And that? Of course I beeped that. And that? Yep. What about that? Beeped it. Did you beep my pizza? Actually, I booped that one. <laughs> all these beeps and boops, and this is it? That's it. Beep. Wireless is full of awards. Number one in overall network performance. Highest in wireless network quality performance. Highest in wireless network quality performance in the North Central region? It's hard to know what to think. That's why Sprint's doing things differently and offering a new 100% total satisfaction guarantee. So you can try out the network, see the savings, and decide for yourself. Switch to Sprint and get both an unlimited plan and one of the newest phones included for just $35 a month. Attention, IHOP has new crispy buttermilk chicken made with all-natural chicken breast, chicken sandwiches, chicken and waffles, cock-a-doodle yum. And for a limited time, IHOP chicken and pancakes, only $6.99. Cheers to a drink with fewer calories and carbs than a glass of white wine. What are you holding? Miller Lite, hold true. Saturday, NFL Network brings the history and tradition of Conference USA. And it all starts with an interstate clash between Grambling and Louisiana Tech. Touchdown! Saturday at 3.30, live on NFL Network. Nothing early Alabama AM over Morehouse College. Could have been 10 0 though. Spencer Corey missed wide left from 44. Big question for you. In 80 plus degree weather, 63% humidity. Can you ice your own kicker? <laughs> because they had it at the they would have been a 39 yard field goal. They got a delay of game, backed it up five yards, and he ends up pulling it to the left. And again, we saw him make a 50 yarder in warm up. Last year, zero from zero, zero for zero and 50 plus with Spencer Corey. He's one for two, 40 from 40, not 40, 49. 20 to 29, four for five, but no attempts between the 30 and 39 yards, between 30 and 39 yards last year. But Connell Maynard did tell us that he was comfortable maybe trying up to 50. Regardless, Morehouse back with the football, see if they can get anything going here. The handoff on the inside, and that is the little guy, Santo Dunn. 5'7", 185. Don't let him get to the second level. Uh, he may make you pay. Had 11 touchdowns on the ground a year ago and two through the air. Reese Knuckles, the return man. Tramel Gooden, also a big guy, over six foot. He's a basketball player. Yeah, look for him to try and play above the rim when they decide to throw the ball. And up front, J.J. Syriac, you mentioned him earlier. He's their All-American up front playing right guard. Big tight end, Miles Brown in motion. 250 lined it up on the left side. Nice cutback there by Santo Dunn. Not a lot of room, but maybe three yards to set up third and manageable. He attracts a crowd, doesn't he? I mean, when he takes the football, you're going to see a lot of those maroon shirts have to show up because he will make the first guy miss. 
So I wouldn't be surprised at all if Granville Eastman, the defensive coordinator of Alabama a and is going to play a lot of press coverage, tight coverage on those receivers out wide, and really key on Dunn and try and stuff this running game. If they're going to want to make Michael Sims push the ball downfield, and he doesn't do that very much as a thrower. Uh, free snap penalty. Dunn did take a shot, but a free play there as the right end moved, but Kelvin Dennis, the left tackle, was moving as well. We'll see where this one's going. Offside. Defense, number 36. Five-yard penalty will result in a first down. And yet one Travis Kelly for John. Con Travis missed some time last year, got injured in 2018, only played in four games. You know he's excited to start the season, and he jumps across the line of scrimmage and gives a first down to Morehouse. Sims, though, saw it, heads up there, took that shot downfield. But they blew it dead, and now another flag. Too many men in the huddle, I believe. Illegal substitution, 12 in formation, offense, five yard penalty remains first down. Larry Smith is getting his work in early. It's Rich Freeman, the Morehouse coach, begging to differ on the sideline. He's trying to say that we never even actually got into formation. We were just substituting out. That's what he was trying to signal. But as you noted, Larry Freeman, excuse me, Larry Smith, our referee. No, not how he saw it. No, not how he saw it. So let's see if this offense from Mike Sims can get going here. Five minutes in the inaugural Black College Football Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame, to make your pardon, classic here in Canton. That's Brown again in motion. Santo Dunn slips one tackle. Hard to bring down. Gets a couple of yards there. That was first and 15. Give him three officially. Demetrius Lofton with the tackle. No, beg your pardon. That's about a 35 yard line. There's Dunn, the SIAC Offensive Player of the Year last year. Put up some big performances. Had a game against their huge rival, Tuskegee. 125 yards, three touchdowns, including the big one in overtime. Second and 12. Sims being chased. Check that. That's number 11, Jalen Brown, into the game. So early, they go to the backup quarterback, and Jalen Brown, who we knew would see some time, got some reps with the run ones. He is the better runner here, and he puts those legs to use early. He does a terrific job escaping Marquise Price, number nine, coming in off of the end. He didn't come in and contain Jalen Brown in the pocket. Brown, as you mentioned, a little niftier runner. Used his vision and his legs to get outside and pick up about five. A transfer from Monroe Community College in New York. Now he goes to the sideline, third and five. And Sims is back in there. Sims pulls out of the belly of his back and throws complete. That's Tramel Gooden, the basketball player. And he gets first down yardage into AM territory, 18 yards to the 40. And that's Michael Sims at his best, a cerebral quarterback, makes excellent decisions, and a nice, efficient, accurate dart thrower downfield. He put that one right on the money. And they're going to go with tempo here. No huddle and run back to the line. First play today from AM territory is going to have to wait. There's no foul for illegal substitution on the defense. First down. Down onto the field, Steve White, what do you have? Hey guys, first off, we're starting to get some of these rain showers that we were expecting. They're coming a little bit earlier than we thought. But let's go back to this quarterback rotation. We knew both quarterbacks were gonna play. The one thing we heard, Sims is a guy who did not turn the does not turn the ball over. He didn't last year. Turned it over on the first possession. Guys, real quick, Connell Maynard is standing right in front of me, giving giving the side judge the business right here, because the side judge is the one who threw the flag for an illegal substitution. Okay, we're taking the snap here. Sims with the quick out. It's a quick about a five-yard gainer. But again, we're going to see these quarterbacks rotate, but one thing would be interesting to see Morehouse does is when the backup Jalen Brown comes in, if he runs again, maybe that tips the plays, or if they've got something up their sleeve, as we've been told, there's a little trickeration in Morehouse's offensive mm -hmm. game plan. Good use of trickeration, Steve. That is A.J. Moore, Aurelius, or A.J. Smith, the beg your pardon, Aurelius Smith Jr., wearing number four on that one. It'll set up a second and four. They need the 30 
for the first down. Dunn dropped in the backfield, and he's not going to go anywhere. That is Kevin K.J. Phillips who drilled him for the loss. And a terrific tackle in the hole by Phillips because if he doesn't make that play, that's got a chance of breaking big. Beg your pardon, Charles. Denzel, Denzel Davis, Davis 45. with that one. Yeah, 45, and then you see K.J. Phillips coming in late to help out. But that was a really nice tackle, one-on-one -on -one in the hole against a guy named Santo Dunn who often makes people miss in that spot. Denzel Davis, 5'10", 190, a junior out of Utah, Alabama. If I'm A&M, I'm playing such tight coverage with Michael Sims. I'm going to make him fit it in there on me. Sims rolling out to the left, moving the pocket and throwing, and he is intercepted. Adrian Portlock with the pick, and Portlock has blockers down the far sideline. Portlock getting pushed by his own man into Morehouse territory and back across the 40. Second turnover for Morehouse, and Michael Sims won a fumble, won a pick. Portlock has A&M. And great field position again. <laughs> Terrific play by Adrian Portlock because watch how he gets into the short zone here, but reads the play. Watch his head and his eyes. He sees it all the way, gets out there with the coverage. Now watch him fall back into coverage and take away the pick. What a beautiful job by Adrian Portlock. Nothing happening in front. Fall back, make an interception, and the belt changes hands and goes around the waist of number 30. You got to love the belt. Portlock did not have an interception a year ago. Good way to start this season with an interception here at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. And now Akil Glass is back on the field, putting in the belly of his running back, Jordan Bentley. Not a lot of room there, actually. Uh, no room whatsoever. Daniel Norman leading the charge. Yeah, nice job coming off the edge like that. Looked like hit Norman Bertram Johnson, number 18, just right there at the line of scrimmage, just stepping up and making a heck of a play. Bertram Johnson, one of those versatile safeties who can play near the line of scrimmage and also fall back into coverage. 20 touchdown passes a year ago for Keel Glass already has one today. From the Morehouse 38, a loss of one on that last one. Uh, somebody is wide open. And he got underthrown. That, that could have been a touchdown. That's I, mean, I, I say could have, but it wasn't. That's called missing a layup right there. Yeah. Connell Maynard, his head coach, is extremely exercised down there. Kendrick Johnson, the tight end. Steve Weish, I know you're down there. Did you see Connell Maynard after that missed throw by Akil Glass because it was so wide open? I mean, Connell, boy, he was upset on that one. A glass under pressure on third down, throws to the boundary and throws incomplete there. So after the turnover, nothing doing. And the Morehouse defense makes a stand. Connell Maynard. You see Connell Maynard very upset with Akil Glass for missing that, that first throw especially, and the second one as well. One thing about Connell Maynard, he's hard on his quarterbacks. He used to play that play, he used to play that position as well. But Bertram Johnson in this series, he put the pressure on. The tackle on the first down, the big pressure in the face of Akil Glass on third down. Steve. Hey guys, Connell Maynard, you were talking about it. he walked Akil Glass off the field and he is in his ear the entire time. The position coach had to step in between Glass and Maynard. It was a very, very heated exchange. Seems very calm right now. But another point to watch out for. I mean, it, yep. All right, guys. And we'll get that point after this. A touchback on the punt and a 7 0 lead early, but some missed opportunities for AM. Title. All right, welcome back to the Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And I'm here with one of the co-founders of the Black College Football Hall of Fame, James Harris. First off, Shaq, Alabama A&M up 7-0. They score on their opening drive. I've had a stalemate. What about the start to this inaugural game? I think uh, they have some turnovers early. You know, both teams have, uh, we're expecting to, to finish strong and a good second half. Uh, two outstanding coaches. 
inaugural game shack and of course you and Doug Williams founded the Black College Football Hall of Fame what about seeing it kind of evolve into having a classic here in Canton Ohio we know there's a commitment for the next three years what about evolving to that point uh, we think it's gonna get better and better we have commitments from for the next three years we, the community is involved we want to impress with Akron and Canton and Cleveland all for their support we think it's going to bring a lot of awareness in terms of the school, this community. And we are excited about maybe uh, getting more students here to get it, continue to be interested in our HBCU education. All right, Shaq, quickly, we're seeing it uh, looks like Morehouse going into a uh, uh, second down situation right here. But what would you talk about showcasing black college football and the pageantry and the bands and everything that comes with it what do you think would turn this into success where well, they're filling this stadium and, and everybody's really getting to understand everything that hbc football is about i think just continuing to get the message out i think being able to be broadcast on the nfl network with that type of exposure uh, next year having you know outstanding schools to come i think it's going to grow and grow and uh, extend the experience, the experience that we're going to provide for them with the historical Pro Football Hall of Fame. Great, Shaq, thanks so much for your time. We're going to send it back up to Andrew and Charles because we've got a good game going on behind us. Absolutely. You. Thank you. And great to see Shaq Harris here as well, one of the founding fathers of the Black College Football Hall of Fame. When we were away, Michael Sims with a completion and a first down to Tremel Gooden after Frank Bailey carried on first. Offense, and number 62. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. J.J. Syriac, the right guard. So as this game goes on, and it's always great to see Shaq Harris, one of the all-time greats, and a, another person that I look up to with a great amount of esteem. What we're seeing early from Morehouse's offense, they're struggling to run the football, struggling to find space. The big defense in front of AM is controlling things along the line of scrimmage. Their success has come off of the run pass option, the fake inside, and Michael Sims with a quick throw, and he's had two of those he's completed across the middle. Let's see if AM wants to tighten down coverage on receivers. And here's Sims again pulling it out of the belly and hitting his wide receiver, and then that got dropped. Gooden had it and dropped it. It's incomplete. It's been the only pass of success for them so far. That's the third time they've tried it. Twice they've hit it, as you just noted, Andrew. Good and dropped that one right across the middle. So Granville Eastman, the defensive coordinator of a and starting to take in this, this input, right? Here comes some stuff. Let's see what, what he wants to do now as this game moves on because of what he's seeing from the pass pattern from Morehouse. They talked about taking away Santo Dunn, about not letting him get to the second level. They have done that today. This Morehouse offense averaged nearly 145 yards a game on the ground a year ago. That is the bread and butter setting up that play action game for Sims. And another whistle. Delay a game. Offense. A five yard penalty remains second down. Remember, this is a season opener. And it's a different venue. Pro Football Hall of Fame. Both teams toured it yesterday. That has to inspire at least a little bit of awe in a, in a person and a player. And maybe it's going to take time, take a little bit of time to get themselves comfortable out here. Everybody's still pretty, pretty amped up as this game begins. And we ran into Charles Sims and Dunn yesterday at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You can see that awe, that wonderment on their faces, seeing not only the Black College Football Hall of Fame, Pro Football Hall of Fame. Here's Frank Bailey with room over the left side, a little head of steam, and then running into a wall, getting back close to the original line of scrimmage. It's called a gain of nine. But yes, the history the enormity of this weekend see if they could get some of those jitters out here early these numbers though in conference top five across the board well you've seen some flashes of it already done number one bailey number two if you don't wrap them up they'll make you miss or break the first tackle so you have to gang tackle them and then the sharp throws from Sims across the middle have been most effective so far. Have to avoid the third and long, though. A little swing here to Bailey, who has blockers. Bailey is not going to get it back, and he's actually going to get drilled by Marquise Price, a guy four times his size, 6'6", 250. They actually played that very well because the guys on the perimeter held up the blockers, and the blockers couldn't move them. That allowed Marquise Price, at defensive end number nine, to retreat back into the secondary and make the tackle and stop him short of the first down. So fourth and five coming up here. And here comes the punter, Fernando S. Delamora. He's going to bounce and roll and be downed on the 30-yard line. Thank <laughs> you. 
1968, deep in the segregated South, students from the HBCU South Carolina State attempt to enter a whites-only bowling alley, and a protest descends into tragedy. Orangeburg is the story of that dark moment, a lasting legacy, and the students and football players who stood together. That is coming up immediately after this broadcast. Don't want to miss it on NFL Network. That looks terrific. And now, now we've got a keel glass back running the team, Andrew, and a new tailback, Gary Quarles, who opened up the game with a big kickoff return for a &M. Gary Quarles took that kickoff to open this game across midfield and set his team up for a one-play touchdown drive. Carried the ball 50 times a year ago, and here's his first carry of 2019, and it is a good one. Nice move, and Quarles jukes a couple of tacklers and gets it out to the 49-yard line, a gain of 19. But we always talk about running backs who get whatever their offensive line blocks for them. That's enough. But how about the guys who get more? The blind gave him a great block, and then he put a terrific move on Bertram Johnson, number 18, right there. It made him miss and get additional yardage. And now Brian Jenkins, also dangerous. The hype guy, if you will. You see him with a uh, little chatter on the sideline with A.J. Harris with decent yardage as well, a gain of maybe eight. Listen, he's a football kid through and through. His father has been a head coach in the HBCUs at Bethune-Cookman in Alabama State. And he kind of came with him with his father who came on the staff last year as kind of a throw-in. And boy, they glad they got that little water bug. And officially, it is a gain of around eight, and Glass out is going to throw, and he's going to go deep, and he has a man open, and he overthrows, overthrows a big pardon, Zabrian Moore. I know that a Glass looks like he missed it, but I think Zabrian Moore doesn't find the football early enough. When he's running the route downfield, he's got to get his head back around and find his quarterback because he's five yards clear. But he doesn't find his quarterback early enough, doesn't know where the football is, and ends up being an incomplete pass. So everyone's going to look at Akeel Glass. I don't know that's as much on him as Avery Moore not finding the football early enough. Makai Page had the coverage there, and you see the rain starting to fall. As Steve Weich had mentioned it about 10 minutes ago, it's really coming down now. As Jenkins has it, lost it. Is that a lateral? They're going to blow it dead and rule it. No ruling yet. Pass. Incomplete pass, Larry Smith says. I don't know if that was it. I don't know. I, didn't, I never saw the signal for incomplete pass for the official who was on the spot. And it looked a lot like a lateral to me. There is no replay today. So keep that in mind as you watch this. Jenkins never had it. Never had it. But if it's a lateral, free ball. KJ Phillips picked it up as a better angle. Take a look. Now you tell me if that's a lateral. That's or not. a ooh, that's a lateral to me. Oh, there's no question that's a lateral. That's at least a half a yard behind where Akil Glass threw the football. But I did hear the whistles blow the play dead. The ruling on the field is a backward pass, recovered by the defense. First down, Morehouse. And now they change it. Good eye, Charles Davis. Morehouse football. And our third turnover today, but the first one forced by the Maroon Tigers. An excellent job out on the perimeter by Morehouse's defense, realizing they could rally to the football. They thought they were breaking up a pass. Instead, they were creating a takeaway. And that was Makai Page that we see there, number 21. Back from an ACL last year, had a chance to chat with him a little bit in pregame. What a great young man. And I said, how's everything with the knee? He said he feels great, did all the rehab, and couldn't wait to get out here and play today. He just came up with a big play there. And now the rain is really coming down. Keep that in mind as Morehouse opens this drive on the A&M 46-yard line. Swings it to Santo Dunn. And the little guy's going to get to the 40, call it a gain of six on first down. And I'm allowed to say little guy for the record. Yes, you can. You, you, there's no doubt about it. But he is a tough little guy. I mean, there's Rich Freeman. Had a chance to talk with Scott Pioli, the former GM in the, in the NFL and assistant GM with the Falcons. I'll tell you more after this play about our conversation about Rich Freeman. On second and four, Sims done again. Bounces off one tackle. Bounces off another. Keeps his feet moving and falls forward across the 30 for a first down. And he got some help on that one, didn't he, partner? How about the blocks out wide? When you watch this play to the right of your screen, watch the blocks right there. And a good job to allow him 
to get upfield. Portlock unable to wrap him up after the blocks, and he runs through another tackle to gain the additional yardage. And a gain of 10 to the 30, inside of 30 now, remaining in the first quarter. Deepest drive from Morehouse into Alabama A&M territory today. The pump fake. Sims may run, keeps his eye down the field, and throws it. End zone and incomplete. He had Reese Knuckles, but couldn't connect. Look like it looks to me like Sims is starting to get into a little bit better rhythm. But to finish my story, Rich Freeman ends up being a guy that. And look at this. Sims with an opportunity. Misses it on that. What I was saying about Rich Freeman, though, he got a chance to work in the, fel in the Bill Walsh Fellowship, right? Diversity co uh, coaches program in the NFL. Two years with the Atlanta Falcons. Scott Pioli called him three times, and Rich Freeman never returned his call. <laughs> you know why? Because Rich Freeman thought it was someone made, playing a joke. And when Pope Pioli finally got him, he said, You sure? Is that really you, Scott Pioli? And then they end up striking up a friendship. Been with the Falcons the last two years in summer training camp. And did a heck of a job there. It really is Scott Pioli. He really <laughs> is that kind of guy who reaches out and makes those phone calls. Sims not known for his running ability, and he slips there on what is becoming an increasingly wet turf. And Juan Travis Kelly gets credit for that. We are one quarter in, seven nothing Alabama A&M with the lead here. Fifteen minutes out at the inaugural Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic. be in Canton when the class of 2020 take their place among the greatest of all time official ticket packages are on sale now and include VIP experiences premium seating and parties with Pro Football Hall of Famers get your package today at hofexperiences.com this is your chance for the experience of a lifetime The Black College Football Hall of Fame was founded 10 years ago in Atlanta, and it has a new home here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. This was the ribbon cutting yesterday for that new home. The man who you saw standing there in the red jacket, now wearing a fantastic white jacket and a pinstripe one as well, is the president of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, David Baker, joining Charles Davis and yours truly here in the booth how are you sir and andrew great to be with you and charles you guys know the great respect i have for both of you personally and professionally and to have you here at the inaugural black college football hall of fame classic with the nfl network is really really cool well, we appreciate that and the feelings mutual and it's tough for andrew and i in one sense because we knew you as the commissioner of the arena football league so now you're not the commissioner we know who the commissioner is <laughs> but you are the president so we're good with that it's always great to be with some alumni here of the arena football league and now we have santo dunn taking this one on third down as mike sims is backpedaling and almost got brought down they kept it alive however it's going to be fourth down on the 25 yard line it is a gain of six don't be surprised if they go for it here from here it would be a 43 yard field goal try let's see what they do david baker what does it mean to have the black college football hall of fame here in Canton? you know andrew this is really important because this uh, the hbc is a big part of the nfl story you know, there was a lot of time when these guys, these Hall of Famers, couldn't get into white colleges. But frankly, when guys like Gil Brandt and Bill Nunn went out and found the best talent available, they were scoping the HBCs. This is a 42-yard field goal try, and it is wide to the right, no good, by Fernando S. De La Mora. So they thought the range may be 30 to 35 here, according to Rich Freeman. That one... 42 and it didn't connect and it's great as well to have so many of those Hall of Famers back here this week You know, it's very cool. We have 28 members of the Pro Football Hall of Fame who are also part of the Black College Football Hall of Fame from historical black colleges But to also see guys like Harold Carmichael and Emerson Walls and uh, Darnell Parkinson and uh, you know, just a, a, a two tall Jones uh, and, and they're so appreciative uh, of having a home finally and so when I knock on the door of all those guys at the Pro Football Hall of Fame at the Super Bowl that you guys at the NFL Network have put out so often, it's great to welcome them to Canton. It's great to welcome these guys to Canton for all time as well. Keel Glass back with the football here for a and Hands it to Jordan Bentley. And not much there. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. And this game is going to be now an annual tradition. It's going to be an annual tradition. Let's see, next year we have Howard 
and uh, Central, State, Central of Ohio. State of Ohio. After that, we have Grambling and Tennessee State. Uh, so, so we're booked. We're going to keep building this and making it bigger and better every year. I mean, I'm not trying to pass over Howard and Central State because you talk about the capstone. Howard coming from D.C. Central State, the Marauders, Billy Joe, one of those the people who was in yeah. the Black College Football Hall of Fame, was a head coach, three straight Black yep. National Championships. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's going to be a heck of a game. But when you talk about elites, blue bloods, historically black colleges, Grambling, Tennessee State, yeah. Eddie Robinson and Big John Merritt, James Shaq Harris and Eldridge Delord, George Prayer Dickey. Doug well, Williams. We're there. Doug, yeah. we, we, can go, we can go on all day. It, it's going to be fun, but there's so much history here. And again, at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, our job is to keep that history. It's to guard the game. And this HBC history is a part of the NFL history, so we're excited about that. And, and I think that that's key, to guard the game, to guard the history of the game, because some people say, wait a minute, why a college football Hall of Fame? Zabrian Moore with the slant, and then the go into Morehouse territory to the 45, and a big gain there, and a gain of 25. Now, President Baker and Andrew, what we've seen early in the game for Morehouse, their best passes have been off of this action. Ride the back inside, pull it, throw it across the middle. Well, here A&M comes back with a taste of their own medicine, hits Adrian Moore for a big gainer. And now a deep ball again to Moore, this time incomplete and behind it. Back to that point before about the history of the game. This is the 100th year, obviously well documented, of the National Football League. But as you guard that history and make sure that other generations know it, college football and the HBCUs are such a huge part of the game. This is a marriage that makes all the sense in the world. You, you know, one of the things we do here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame is we promote the values of the game. And it's not just about the worship of the football hero or just the love of the game of football, but it's really about the courage and the character and the perseverance and the commitment uh, that these guys, uh, you know, demonstrate. And frankly, if we can learn from that, we can be better fathers or, or mothers or better companies or better community and certainly a better country. You see this play, and I have one for you, President Baker. <laughs> Offense, number four. Five-yard penalty remains third down. I believe that's our third delay game of the day, Charles. Yeah, everybody's still trying to work out the kinks. So, President Baker, when, when we start doing this and we take these games out there and we promote them, you often hear some people go, but we have a pro football Hall of Fame. Why do we need a black college football Hall of Fame? You alluded to it earlier. <laughs> Can you answer that question for those who, who remain uneducated about why this is so important and why it's necessary? You know, you know this is one of the things I love about the game. And, and, and you know a little bit about my family history and Sam and, yes. you know, uh, the grandsons that I have. But uh, By the you, way, it, President it, Baker, Sam held down left tackle for the Atlanta Falcons for a long time and did it quite well. Go ahead. Well, I, I'll tell you, it's not about the color of your skin. It's about where you went to school. The historical black colleges, yes, there were... They, they had black athletes because you couldn't get into white colleges. But it's now the kind of a cultural, historical black college system uh, that is educational, that is music, that is a, a lot of wonderful things. So it's not about the black athlete. It's about where that athlete came from. He came from small colleges that were for historical black athletes um, where guys didn't have the same opportunities. James Harris said that when he went to Grambling, he had the promise of a college scholarship, but he had the hope of playing in the NFL. And he couldn't have gotten that any place else at that time except in the historical black colleges. James Shaq Harris, the first African-American quarterback to start a season for either an AFL or an NFL team that was with the Bills and then Take one, lead one to the playoffs. That was with the Los Angeles Rams. And, and also was the Pro Bowl MVP at one point. Pro Bowl MVP the Pro Bowl. as well as Ryan Jenkins with the screen here. The middle screen. Blockers downfield on third and long, third and 20 after another penalty. And they're going to get backed up and force the punt with K.J. Phillips. I beg your pardon, the other 45, Denzel Davis. But if I may, you know, when Please. Doug Williams and James Harris came and said, invited, they wanted a home. And, and they wanted Canton to be their home. Well, well, frankly, my question was, why not the College Football Hall of Fame? But frankly, it's such a wonderful story for the NFL to tell. Because once you got to the NFL, and once there were guys like Bill Nunn and Gil Brandt that were looking for the best talent available, it was all about your character. It was all about whether you could get the job. And in our game, we measure character by the yard. Yes. 
Well, as we get ready for this punt here, David Baker, president of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, we greatly appreciate you having us here. It's been a fantastic weekend. Fair catch of the 16. Hope to do it again next year. Yes. Love you guys. You guys, you, you guys are invited every year for we the rest of time. That. Thank you, Thank you guys. Baker, Thank you. Appreciate it, Andrew. Job. Thank you, Thank for you Charles. Very proud of you guys. 7 nothing. A&M over Morehouse. You wouldn't accept an incomplete job from anyone else. Why accept it from your allergy pills? Flonase relieves your worst symptoms, including nasal congestion, which most pills don't. Flonase helps block six key inflammatory substances. Most pills only block one. Flonase. They've said a lot of things about Tony Harris. They said she was too slow. Too weak. They said she'd never get to the next level. Yeah, people have made a lot of assumptions about Tony. But I've never been a big fan of assumptions. And neither have we. Introducing the hybrid that will shatter perceptions. The built for speed RAV4 hybrid. Toyota, let's go places. Why choose Invisalign over other aligners? Only Invisalign treatment uses smart track technology. It moves teeth more comfortably and predictably than ordinary aligners. So I could create custom treatment plans for every smile. To those who say bourbon can't taste refreshing, we invite you to see the light. Jim Beam, ginger ale, and a squeeze of lemon. The Jim Beam and ginger highball, a refreshing take on bourbon. So I can buy from Enterprise Car Sales and you'll take any trade-in. That's right. Great. There you go. Well, it does need to be a vehicle. But I need this out of my house. With a fair, transparent value for every trade-in, Enterprise makes it easy. If you're looking for the best place to pick up a pizza, might we recommend the place with pizza in the name? Call Pizza Hut now to pick up a large three-topping pizza for just $7.99. No one out pizzas the hut. It's 8 p.m. on a Saturday. We gotta go. The guys are waiting. Here. Old Spice. Shh. Bring back potato skins. Fantasy football season is here. There's a lot of new stuff going on. And our experts have the insights you'll need to blow out the competition. I'm saying he has the most upside. What a catch! NFL Fantasy Lock premieres tomorrow at 6, only on NFL Network. It's a 7-0 game here with Alabama A&M leading Morehouse. 11-31 remaining in the second quarter. Tom Benson, Hall of Fame Stadium. Can't emphasize it up. What a great weekend it has been here in Canton. The inaugural classic, the Black College Football Hall of Fame with a new home here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Some penalties early, seven total between these two teams. Morehouse back with the football, and that is Mike Sims who opens the game 8 of 11 and now 9 of 12, but they have not been able to move the ball much. Santo Dunn wrestled down immediately. He has yet to really break loose. That's a gain of two. And Joshua M. Williams makes the play on the perimeter, and if he does it, that's a big gainer because on the initial throw, it was a double-team block on the perimeter by Morehouse, which opened things up for Dunn. But in the open field, Joshua M. Williams replaced and made a terrific tackle to get him on the ground. You said it is early season. Obviously, the first game for everyone. You saw those penalty stats there. Seven total as Sims out of the shotgun on second down. Throws to the wide side of the field. And it's not going to get much because A.J. Smith fell down. And just short of the yard marker, too. Watch A.J. Smith, number four in white, sell the deep ball. And you see Josh M. Williams, number 28. He doesn't find the football or the receiver, and he gets out of there fast, thinking he's going to run a deep route. Hits him just short of the mark, but I, I think guess they're they gave him enough him. for the first down. If he needed around seven, they're going to give him seven, Charles. Look at the formation up here. Bunch up here with four. One isolated down here. Let's see if they want to go to the one-on-one -on -one in open space to the wide side. Let's see if they do that on first down. Sims fakes it to the right. Avoids the pressure. Sims now, look at that creative little lefty toss there and a completion to Trevor Gachaba. You know, this that formation reminds me a little bit loosely of Archie the Gunslinger Cooley <laughs> at Mississippi Valley State. 
You see Dunn making, you see Dunn making the little fake like he's getting the ball. And he used to run what they called the stack eye. Uh -huh. All the way out to the wide side to get Jerry Rice one-on-ones back on the, on the opposite side. And Willie the Satellite Totten used to find it. But I think Michael Sims is settling in nicely now, showing that poise that we were told that he possessed and recovering after a fumble and an interception early. Well, that was good for eight. And now it's second and two with trips to the left. And hand of the man in motion, Santo Dunn. He's in space, and he, too, is going to slip on this wet field. He's going to get a first down, but he wanted more. He gets to the 42 in a gain of eight. So watch. He's going to come back this way. And on the jet sweep, makes the first guy miss. Gets a nice block there downfield from number eight. Knuckles. BC Knuckles. And now Sims on the keeper. Pulls it back from Dunn and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Run out of bounds by 16 to, Wild, to Willie Wilson. I don't know about you, Andrew, but I'm feeling like, and Steve Weish, this game has felt like Alabama A&M has sort of dominated it. Yet it's only a seven to nothing game. And I think Morehouse's defense has to get a lot of credit for keeping them in it early. What do you think? Well, absolutely, Charles. I mean, Morehouse's defense, remember, Alabama AM strength is its offensive line. And they have been able to really create a lot of pressure. They've been penetrating on the run game. You know, and guys, Akil Glass just has not been on target. He, he, that last drive, he, he made a couple passes that just were not on the mark. Connell Maynard w w was on him again. So that was part of the issue. But Morehouse, okay, we got a little jostling going on right here. But Morehouse has really played some, some fairly solid football on the defensive side, but they just are not hitting any explosive plays offensively as we're seeing. This is their best drive. I'll say this. I'm near the Alabama A&M sideline. You would not know they're winning this ball game right now. I mean, they are really kind of discouraged. There's a, there's a little bit of hanging of the heads right now. Um, so we'll see how they respond to this right now. But I think just because their offense is not clicking like they wanted to, they're really not feeling good about themselves. They're lucky that their defense is playing so well. Well, Steve, the head coach has been lighting them up. Lighting them up. <laughs> from, we from, we from can the hear them from up here. Yeah, it is. Kyle Maynard is, uh, you know, is somebody who's clearly expressing himself. In a few minutes, I'm going to be interviewing his former head coach, Bill Hayes. Oh, so seeing Frank the big one. Bailey. We're seeing the big one. Bailey is gone. He's gone. He took that. There's the explosive play, guys. I'm going to send it back up to you. A 59-yard touchdown. You asked for the explosive play. You get it from Frank Bailey with the touchdown. He had 100 yards in the opener last year, and he strikes big this year, and we could be tied. So the pass rush comes up in here, right? Now watch, Fryce frees it right there. Now watch the cut here, which creates the blocking lanes, and then the cut back all the way across the field. Excellent job by Bailey. Now look at him cut there, and just leaves four maroon shirts behind and takes it all the way to pay dirt. Frank Bailey with a 59-yard touchdown. He ran for two last year. He did not catch a touchdown, but he has one here. The extra point is good, and we are tied. 7-7. Seven, seven. So Alabama A&M might be out playing them, but Morehouse strikes back. And it's a 7-7 seven, seven game here. And Canton and the inaugural Black Power Football Hall of Fame Classic. Happens again, I don't want to miss it. Look, fellas, today is game day. No more time for practice. You know how to kick, you know how to block, you know how to pass, you know how to tackle. It's time to play smart because when you play smart, you win. Doesn't get much better than that. No, We're talking about that. Edwin Moses, Morehouse college graduate, had the streak in the 400 meter hurdles, 122 straight races he won. Nine years, nine months that covered before Danny Harris finally got him. When I was working for the Olympic Committee back in my youth, I used to have to pick up Edwin Moses at airports. Come on. Yes, for, for meetings, board meetings, things of that nature. And every time, total awe, and today, still in awe. So if Edwin's watching, Thanks for being so great to me That's all great, those years Charles. ago when I had to pick you up at the airport. 
Man, how cool was that? Gold medal in 76 in Montreal and 84 in Los Angeles in the 400 meter hurdles. And maybe, just maybe, that's some inspiration for Morehouse to pull off another week one upset. Last year, Morehouse beat Arkansas Pine Bluff 34 to 30. Another SWAC team to open up the season. And here we're tied. Morehouse, Alabama AM 7 7 in Canton. I still I go back to my point earlier. Morehouse's defense hung tough with the early going and not much of a kick there. No, not much of a kick at all. It's going to go to the 35 yard line and that's where alabama a m is going to start things off jabron mcneil falls on it let's go back to that morehouse scoring drive because michael sims is finally showing he can play 12 of 16 now for 151 yards and he gets 59 of that on a catch and run by bailey yeah he's really settled in nicely remember he had the fumble early threw an interception early looked a little bit out of his comfort zone but he's back being that guy my counter for A&M would be to tighten on the receivers and make them throw it over his head because the dart throwing is working well for Michael Sims. Akil Glass, now your quarterback. Ryan Jenkins on the wide side of the field, and Jenkins has blockers. Jenkins gets first down yardage out near midfield. Officially, he's going to get 14 yards. Good way to start the drive. Well, Bailey just hit Frank Bailey just hit him with the, the screen, the running back screen for a touchdown. And AM says, well, we see that play. We'll add a little twist to it. We'll show a little misdirection. We'll swing our quarterback left, have him throw back right. And Brian Jenkins picks up a first down. With our guy wearing number two. And now it's dropped. Could have been big yards because they had the blockers set up on the far side of the field as well. Zabrian Moore could not hang on. And it needs to be noted the rain is coming down. We've seen a couple of guys slip on this new field, a field turf field. And we've seen guys drop some balls as well. Screen game becoming prevalent for both teams right now at a certain point I would expect AM to fake a screen and take a shot downfield maybe later on in the game Jordan Bentley in the backfield He will take the handoff and that hole closes quickly Nothing doing there as Julian Turner the linebacker that we told you so much about as this game was getting underway made the tackle. Well, when this game started, I think most of us thought the big offensive line of AM might have a chance to impose its will on a smaller defensive front of Morehouse. But so far in this game, Morehouse's defensive front has been up to the task. Jordan Bailey, number Jordan Bentley, number one, their deleting rusher, is struggling to get going in the running game. Morehouse. It's the first and a half. Will be a 30 second timeout. Morehouse was running guys off the field there defensively, trying to make a substitution, and they're going to call a timeout. Rich Freeman will use his first timeout, two remaining on a third and nine, halfway through the second quarter here in Kansas. So to see this and this is the first now, classic the, the black college great, football great, Hall of Fame classic great, But it is the 24th meeting between yeah, Morehouse and Alabama a and m Morehouse hasn't great, won great, since 1959 great, But as the great, rain comes down here, we have a tie game and a 7-7 score in the second quarter a third and nine after Morehouse burned a timeout defensively glass to Bentley who lowers his shoulder. He's going to be close to the marker, but not enough. It's going to be fourth and around a yard and a half, and they're going to keep the offense on the field to gain a seven. He's trying to create some momentum as Connell Maynard, their head coach, trying to get a spark going. Look how quickly they're trying to get to the line of scrimmage and get going here before Morehouse can get set up. And he has Bentley. Glass does in the backfield and an offset pistol, and it's going to be Bentley. Big hole over the right side. He has a first down across the 35 to keep it alive on fourth and one, a gain of 10. And tempo again. Want to keep the foot on the gas. Jenkins complete with blockers. Jenkins. Ripped down. You see that knee buckle a little bit. Bertram Johnson with the tackle. It's enough for a first down, a gain of 11, a gain of 13, actually, with a flag, though, on the far side. Look to the left of your screen. Look at that block right there. Defense. That penalty's declined. Result of the play. First down. So those are two terrific blocks downfield. Do you see it? Kendrick Johnson, number 89, leveled the first one. Looked like Abdul Fatah Ibrahim, number 85, the second one. 
Excellent job blocking the perimeter on another screen pass. Kendrick Johnson, the big man, at 6'3", 235, 89, that tight end. I think they've got to find him some pass plays at some point. He's got to be a matchup nightmare in a game like this. The little pitch to Bentley. Bentley trying to get around the outside. Bentley stays on his feet down the sideline and pushed out of bounds inside the five. And if they go in and score, Andrew, remember, fourth in about a yard and a half, they decide to go for it to create momentum. And since that time picking it up, the momentum's been all on the side of the Bulldogs. Their offense is clicking. And Bentley finally finding some space to roam after the early part of the game where he was getting stacked up. And a late flag, Charles. Now they're going to back him up after that gain of 18. As Bentley got around Diedrich Van over the track guy, he beat him to the boundary. But they're going to back him up. So wipe the whole thing out. At some point, find 89 in the passing game. That big target led the SWAC last year in tight end receptions, Kendrick Johnson. Glass hit as he throws down the sideline, caught with a flag. It's a touchdown for now. Zabrian Moore has it. Now they're going to roll him down to the one. They're going to roll him down to the one, but there's a flag. Might have a roughing the passer. And we also have one out there where it could be holding on the defense. It will be declined if indeed it doesn't go, if indeed the other flag is not against AM. Flag in the backfield. Because I think Xavier Moore had to fight through a hold to make that tremendous catch. It was a gain of 25. And there's a flag on the far side, Charles, as you pointed out on the 12. There are two Larry fouls Smith. by the defense on the play. Pass interference. Defense, number five. That penalty is declined. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense, number 55. That penalty will be enforced half the distance from the end of the run. First and goal. So, so now you just turn the ball sideways? Because it's Basically. pretty much down in front of the goal line. So watch this. There's the penalty inside. Marquise against, DeWert. Yes. But what a catch by Moore. Because watch inside DeWert right there. And he's up high in the, in the head and the neck area. And that's where the flag comes from. Because the timing wasn't bad. But he's way up there up top on him. And that's why the flag went down. And a little pushing and shoving there as well. As Glass was pointing downfield and saying, look, he caught it. Now out of the pistol, first and goal. Far hash on the one. The give to Bentley and a touchdown. So Alabama A&M with under six to go in the second quarter. Punches it in and takes the lead. All right, now they finally get some movement up front. Is that offensive line for Alabama A&M? Dexter Fuqua, number 61, a key block inside that allowed Bentley to find just enough space to slide into the end zone. And show some power as well and lower that shoulder into Julian Turner. Finally, he's starting to ramble a little bit. You remember how the first few series, Jordan Bentley couldn't find space. Alabama A&M retakes the lead. 14 to seven, Jordan Bentley with a one yard touchdown. The Patriots have won their sixth Super Bowl title. All right, welcome back to the Black College Football Hall of Fame. With six minutes left in the first half, Alabama A&M just scored to go up 14 to seven. And now I'm joined by class of 2018 Black College Football Hall of Fame and Shriney coach Bill Hayes. Coach, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it's great, man. I'm loving every bit of it. These people in Ohio have been great to us, and uh, my whole group is really excited about being here. Well, that's fantastic. Now, look, Coach Hayes, you, a fantastic coaching career, but maybe one of the best moves you made was you hired Connell Maynor at Winston-Salem State. He continued a great legacy there. Now Connell is coaching over here for Alabama A&M. Well, first of all, I, I recruited and coached Connell Maynor. Yeah, you, yeah absolutely. You and coach. then when I became athletic director, I hired him because I knew he was a winner. I knew he, he's a Pied Piper. 
You know, when he blows that flute, everybody's going to follow. He has that kind of charisma that makes people want to follow him. And I knew that from the beginning. And what you're seeing out here today, his offense, they score quickly, and then they kind of stumble, stumble, and then they get that nice drive where they're going perimeter edge, perimeter edge right there. What you like? What you like about what you saw, what he just did? Well, really, it's the first ball game. And so both teams are kind of feeling their way through. Uh, I think uh, I, I think Alabama is much stronger up front. Uh, Morehouse is real quick on defense. Uh, with this weather, Alabama A&M may have to run the ball a little bit more inside and establish the run to slow them down a little bit. Uh, Morehouse is really quick, though, in trying to get the ball out on the perimeter. So it's just a matter of, of uh, size and strength against speed and quickness. All right, we see right here, Morehouse is going to take the ball. This is to our left, right around the 20. Lastly, one thing Connell Maynard said he took from you was the discipline and the accountability that you instilled in your players when you were coaching him. What about that, with the way you did it, and what about the way he's handling it? Well, I think kids really enjoy discipline. They love it. They might, they might act like they don't, but they, people love to be told what to do. They want to be matter-of-fact. And so we just believed it was it was good when we just made things real clear and real simple and be really demanding. And we found out the kids respond to that work really well. All right, Coach Hayes, I send this up to Charles Davis and Andrew. Charles, you know, we heard that the coach loved to make his players run hills. Did you love to be disciplined like that? You know, it's exactly like Coach said. There's not a chance that I loved it at the time. But now it's paid off for me later. We, we ended up doing stadium steps. I didn't have Coach Hayes' hills, and I understand that Connell Maynard makes him roll, you know, length of the football field when discipline has to come up. Any form of that, no player enjoys. Well, Mike Sims has been told what to do, and that is sit on the bench right now as he's been playing well. Now Jalen Brown is in. He's the running quarterback, and Jalen Brown tries to get to that yard marker on the sideline with two flags back on the near hash. He was right at the marker. They're going to mark him about a yard short, but we have Holding. to wait on that flag. Offense, number 83. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains second down. They're going to get the big tight end, Miles Brown, for the hold. 83, right there on Portlock. Portlock's been around the ball a lot, hasn't he? Portlock made the tackle on the kickoff that just, uh, just occurred. And he's been around the ball, made an interception. And how about Kushni? on that great run from his defensive end spot all the way to the sideline to make the tackle number 57 for Alabama a &M. With good pursuit the entire way on Jalen Brown, the more fleet of foot of these two quarterbacks, the transfer from Monroe Community College in New York. But now Sims is back in there and he throws wide and incomplete to 87, Albert Connell, the son of the former NFL wide receiver of the same name. Now, Harry Williams, the offense coordinator for Morehouse, told us that he loves a two-quarterback system. But it's an interesting system because when he is putting Brown in the game, he's not getting the full series. He's getting a play or two, out, you know, and then Sims comes back in. So it's an interesting mix and, you know, mix and match that he's doing with his quarterbacks right now. But for Jalen Brown, he hasn't had a chance to have a full series in order to try and develop a rhythm. Hard to really get into a groove there. Brown... Push Sims in the preseason to try to win that starting job. Sims is now back out there, and Kushney's chasing him to the sideline. Sims just kinds of, kind of flicks it. It didn't get back to the line of scrimmage, but he was quarterback was out of the tackle box. That, this was Marcus Kushney's uh, set of downs for Alabama a &M, number 57. You called it, Andrew. Put the pressure on early and getting out in open field with the tackle. Puts the pressure on late. Now forcing a punt by Morehouse from deep in their own territory. And I would be way up as a punt returner right now because I wouldn't want the ball to hit in front of me, drop, and give them some extra roll. And this is Fernando S. Delamora, the punter. Brian Jenkins, fields, spins, 40, in traffic, still on his feet, and then thrown down inside the 40 after a 42-yard punt and a flag near midfield. Marquise DeWert, the big man down there with the tackle. I think when you say another flag on the field, that's some of your best work. Thank you. Larry Smith has been busy today. He and his crew. Yes, a Big Ten crew calling this game. We are in Big Ten country. During the return. 
holding. Return team, number 81. 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. Let's go down to Steve White on the sideline. Hey guys, just one thing we noticed the last two defensive series for Alabama AM, they're a cornerback and defensive captain, Mike Mills, who's from Dayton, Ohio, has a lot of family here. He has been out with an ankle injury. We're told that he's going to get it retaped at halftime. He's going to try to give it a go, but he's one of their key players on defense. Back oh, to you guys. That's that's a great report, Steve. It's too bad. Gets to come back home and play. Dayton, home of the Dayton Triangles, one of the early NFL teams. Mike Mills, a fifth year senior little delay handoff to Gary Quarles and the Morehouse defense wasn't fooled now that might be part of what coach Hayes was talking about with Steve Weish when he had the interview a little while ago the Hall of Fame coach Bill Hayes saying with this weather Alabama a and may not be quite as wide open may have to run the ball a little bit more Gary Quarles got the first carry of, the, of that series Cameron Evans in the middle of that line wearing 56 leading the charge it's a loss of two and a second and 12 under four to go now in the first half glass backs up finds Jenkins man he is fast he gets to the outside and he almost got down the sideline but he was ripped down with a flag Jonathan Mathis with the tackle horse collar could have been you see that just, jersey ripped just the way he pulled back on him that could be the call and you see Jenkins smiling boy he got to the corner as you said in a hurry during the run personal foul First caller tackle, defense number 22. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic, first down. Our 12th accepted penalty of the first half. When we talk about an explosive player, watch Brian Jenkins get to the corner, and as he's turning up, right there the horse collar takes place by Jonathan Mathis, number 22. But if he doesn't get that, he might have been turbocharged down the sideline. Looks like he got him as much on the side of the shoulder pad as he did behind him. Ball's on the field. Ball's recovered. That's a fumble. And Jazz Hawkins has the recovery for Morehouse. Jazz Hawkins, a transfer from Gardner Webb University. Where he played in three games, had one tackle, Gardner Webb. Now he makes an impact here. A little confusion between Quarles 27, Glass 4, and Hawkins says, if you want to lay it on the turf, I'm there. And That's now he sets, him, sets his offense up in excellent field position. That is our fourth, sorry, Charles, turnover of the day. At the mesh point there, Glass looked like he couldn't decide what to do. And in the end, we got a turnover chain here and, and with a big man. And what's interesting to me about that is Glass is not going to keep the ball except once every blue moon. So to me, I don't understand having trouble at the mesh point because the back's getting the football. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Well, so Jazz. Put it, go ahead and put it in his chest and let him have it. Jazz Hawkins will take it. Reese Knuckles flips. That Sims, the quarterback, throwing it deep and almost intercepted by Amari Holloway. And then a flag in the offensive backfield on the 34. Oh, that was fun. What did Steve? What did Steve Weish call that? Trickeration. We the, might the have. The game? He said. And then there it was. Personal foul, roughing the quarterback. Defense number 36. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Juan Travis Kelly. So watch. So they start with Santo Dunn with a handoff to Frank Bailey, who flips it to Michael Sims, and he throws a pop fly that should have been picked off by Amari Holloway, but watch up high, there it is. Another shot in the head, in the neck and shoulder area. So instead of an interception, which they missed because he dropped the ball, it turns into a big penalty, and Morehouse gains it, and again, they're gonna put Michael Sims, their quarterback, out wide here, and they're gonna have Frank Bailey taking the snap, their running back. Frank Bailey, number two who's been electric today, ripped down to the backfield by Kelly, but another flag. Flags now on consecutive plays. 3-14 remaining. Run, holding, offense number 79. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot remains. First down. You're watching NFL Network. This is the Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic, the inaugural Classic here with some rain coming down in Canton, Ohio. Steve White's down at the sideline. 
Charles Davis to my side. I'm Andrew Siciliano. We have Alabama A&M leading Morehouse College, a Division II school, 14 to 7. But Morehouse and Coach Rich Freeman has the ball here after forcing a turnover across midfield, but after another penalty, facing a first and 20. Sims dumps it off. Bailey, as again, they go to the screen game. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it isn't. This time, it wasn't. Alabama a Timeout by Alabama a and and it's first. It'll be 30 seconds in length. Mike Mills back in the game. Sorry, Charles. Steve White said earlier, it looked like he had to get his ankle retaped. The only Ohio native, the senior from Thurgood, Thurgood, I beg your pardon, Marshall High School in Dayton, former walk-on. Yeah, it's turned out to be a heck of a player for them, a three-year starter. Talk about being an excellent teammate, one of those guys that, that kind of calms down the entire defense, so they needed his presence back out on the field. And we have another game coming up soon on NFL Network. Grambling State and Louisiana Tech this coming Saturday. NFL Network's bringing the history, the tradition, the pageantry. Conference USA, and it all starts with a showdown. Grambling State, Louisiana Tech, Saturday, 3.30 Eastern time. Live on NFL Network. Now a lot of travel time between those two schools. Pretty close, pretty close in proximity. Nice battle, Louisiana, 10 miles apart. I mean, this is, you know, having that type of a rivalry is a good thing. Louisiana Tech got whacked last night, but you know they're going to be ready for that one with the Grambling Tigers. May not even need a bus. Delay to Santo Dunn. And he gets swallowed up immediately by 97 Selmar Russell. Timeout, Alabama a and &M. It's their second charge, 30 seconds in length. And Dunn rips his helmet off, 235 to go here in the second quarter. Alabama a and &M burns another timeout, trying to get the ball back, third and 17. So Alabama A&M came in, a potential top 10 team of the HBCUs. We have Morehouse College coming in here, Charles Davis, with an upset last year in the opener over a SWAC team. Coming off a winning season, trying to put together back-to-back -to -back winning seasons and hanging around. And these, you know, these schools always talk about history. And there is a history here, even though they haven't played since, what, 1997? But the SIAC is where Alabama A&M began, Please start the play which is a conference that Morehouse currently resides in and has continued to be in before A&M went off to the SWAT. So, you know Coach Freeman has told his players, hey, they're just like us. That's the same school. They just made in a different spot now. And his Morehouse Tigers have come out and been very aggressive and played awfully hard on defense despite giving up the two touchdowns. Alabama A&M has won 15 consecutive in this series. Cushney chasing Sims. Ball is on the floor again. Sims gave it up, but it's recovered by Morehouse, and they'll keep it, but it'll be fourth and half the field as Kelvin Dennis fell on it. Somebody Alabama better find a way to block 57 the final charge, in the dark seconds. jersey. Because if they don't, his stat line by the end of this game is going to be like a season long. I mean, I went back and looked last year. Okay, let's see what Marcus Cushney did last year. Okay, had about what, six and a half tackles, two for loss, two sacks, and a quarterback hurry. Is that about a stat line for the first half? Yeah. He has been active and all over the field and is imposing his will on this football game early. And he beat Dennis, the left tackle, and it was Dennis now trailing the play who recovered the fumble to bring the punt team out and denying, at least for now, even better field position. So he will Probably get a, a &M. So Dennis will get a minus on his grade sheet for not blocking him, but he'll get a plus for start dropping his head and staying with the play because he was the one, as you noted, who stayed with it and recovered the fumble. And Alabama A&M calls its final timeout. Morehouse still has two remaining. 2.23 to go here in the first half as Jenkins fields on the 10. He does this a lot. Spins back the other way to try to create some room. He can run. He's got a block as well. And then Jenkins stays on his feet again near the 25. Guy shifty. It looked like Ronald Bradley, number 27, a reserve running back, was the one who really finished things off at the end. But you noted the shiftiness. Miss, miss. Now watch here. He's going to end up right there. Bradley, 27, spins him back. And Jenkins was still trying to find the lane. There's a return of 16 
after a 47-yard punt. They give Jenkins 16. He probably ranked closer to 30. What did Coach Maynard say about Brian Jenkins? Called him a little Maynard? Says he sees himself <laughs> in Brian Jenkins. Says he is the offensive hype guy, and he's the hype guy there on special teams. And it's about his competitiveness as well. Jenkins again, far side. It's the quick game, a lot of the quick game here. No, there wasn't Jenkins, I beg your pardon. Zabry and Moore on that one. Gain of three. And we're under two minutes to go. Alabama A&M out of timeout for Connell Maynard. Burned them all on defense to get the ball back. Let's see, let's see if they just decide to try and run past someone here and try and make a 50-50 ball on a big play downfield. See what happens. Akeel Glass led the swack in passing yards and passing touchdowns a year ago. 20 touchdown passes. Here he is on second and seven. Fires complete. Ibrahim comes back for the football. Catches with his hands and then pushes the pile across midfield. When the coaches talk to us about him, he saves a pure walk-on. Players noticed him working out in the spring. Just showed up. He's earned his way through spring and summer. And now he gets to start in his first game as a pure walk-on as a freshman. And as Connell Maynard said, okay, now we're going to find out if it's real. I think it's real, folks. Absolutely. And again, at 23, now Moore on the far sideline breaks one tackle. Moore carries two tacklers near another first down. They're going to say he's a yard shy on the 40 as we are under a minute remaining now. And the clock winds as they did not get the first down. Clock continued to run. Second and one with an empty backfield now. 45 seconds remaining. As Alabama AM looks to add to its one touchdown lead. Glass falls out. Hit. Morehouse falls on it. Another turnover. Akeel Glass had no chance on that one. Demetrius Lofton, number nine from the blind side, laid the shot on him and knocked the ball free. Watch coming from here. Lofton gets up and under number 75, Shawnee Reams. The all swack offensive lineman. Excellent move by Lofton. Knocks the ball free. Reams can't get it himself. And then a nice scramble and three Morehouse Tigers were around the football. He had no opportunity there. Blindside shot. Balls out. Morehouse holds on yet again. I know they're down 14-7. But I think Morehouse's defense has kept them in this game and given them more opportunities than one would expect with the way the, the first half went. And how about Lofton, a transfer from Georgia Southern, a speed guy beating what many people believe is the best offensive lineman on the field, Sean Ye Reams, and forcing the turnover, giving the ball back now to his offense. And Sims, the lefty, flushed out to his right. Sims incomplete in and out of the hands of Santo Dunn. Morehouse has two timeouts and now 31 seconds with which to work. And a lot of people would think that they just want to go to the locker room here. But with this type of field position, Rich Freeman, the head coach, said, you know something? Let's go ahead and try and get something done here. Why not? Down seven. And remember, all it takes is just get one of those water bugs out in space. Talk about Bailey number two. Talk about Dunn number one. And see if another big play can result because that's how they scored their first touchdown. A lot of five foot eight and under guys. Reese Knuckles, five foot eight as well. He's wearing eight. Santo Dunn is five foot seven and 185. Hey. Trevor Gatsheba, also 5A. Sims, incomplete. Tramel Good led him two for out of bounds and now a flag back on the 42. Got an injured player on the field as well. Maury Smith for Alabama A&M, number 54. The defensive lineman, Maury Smith, is down. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. During the play, personal foul, illegal low block, offense, number one. Ten-yard penalty for the previous spot remains second down. So they get Santo done. 15-yard penalty. With the low block right here. On the right leg. Remember, you can, one, you can't block low. Two, you can't come back towards your line of scrimmage in order to affect that block. Okay, you've got to be able to do it going towards the opposite end zone, not back towards your own line of scrimmage and the end zone behind you. And that's where he got him. Really, it was a double whammy. You're only going to get one penalty out of it, but he committed two in fact. Well, Charles, for a guy who's 5'7", to take down somebody who's 3'13", what has Santo done 
do there. Obviously, you don't want to go low. You don't want to go at anyone's knee. He can't knee. do what he just did because of the injury factor. He's got to come up and almost set a, set a basketball pick. This is what you do. You come up and set a screen, and you don't and you don't put any kind of elbow into him or, or shoulder into him. You just kind of use your hands to ward him off. Last thing you want to do is go low there. Now Dunn, who got called for that 15-yard penalty, takes the block. He has blockers on second and 25, and Dunn gets back across the original line of scrimmage. Holloway with the tackle, a gain of 17, and that's going to stop the clock with the timeout for Morehouse and 14 seconds to go. seconds in length. What a terrific play by Dunn. To 19 seconds. One I nine. mean, he's making people miss. He's making. He's running through tackles to gain that type of yardage out in the open space. There were plenty of maroon shirts around him. He may. He created a big time play there on one that I thought might go down right at the line of scrimmage. I am really impressed with what I've seen from Santo Dunn today. Santo Dunn is electric. I called him a little. You know, he's kind of Terry Tariq Cohen ish. The National Player of the Year in Black College Football when he came out of North Carolina A&T and now doing a heck of a job for the Chicago Bears in the NFL. Coming up, the Battle of Bands, the Morehouse and the Alabama A&M Bands, the marching maroon and white for Alabama A&M for Morehouse. Charles Davis, the House of Funk. Listen, everybody talks about it all the time. The competition for the 60 minutes is fierce and the competition at halftime just as fierce. For those 20 Minutes, a third and six, 19 seconds to go. Morehouse has one time out the clock, will stop in the college game with a first down. Sims over the middle, that's caught by Knuckles. Nice diving catch at the 30 yard line. They're gonna give him the first down and now Morehouse rushes to the line as once they spot that ball, the clock is gonna move, it's at 13. And they spike it. Nice catch by Knuckles. An absolute layout. You just mentioned, how tall did you say Knuckles was? And Knuckles is 5'8", 175. And he used every bit of that. Cradles the football to his body. A clean catch across the middle. That's terrific effort. We need to have the play clock. And held it, though, held it through the entire process as well when he hit the ground. And if you're asking for a second look, did the ball skim the turf? There is no replay here today. That is a Reese Knuckles catch. Out of North Gwinnett, caught 26 passes a year ago. It's now the 32-yard line. Sorry, Charles. Eight seconds, but back here deep, that's Kendrick Johnson, the tight end. Remember when Gronk went back there for New England against Miami, trying to play that free safety? Yep. And Miami foiled it and scored the game winner. Let's see if Morehouse can do the same. They put Sims on the run, and Sims throws complete. They're going to get out of bounds near the 35-yard line. Trevor Gachaba over there. They are not in field goal range, to be fair. 25-yard line right now. This would be a 43-yard field goal try. Estelle Amora's career long is only 36. But they're going to try it. He missed wide right on his last opportunity on these same posts. Officially, it's a 43-yarder. And this would be a career long. It has the leg, and it is good. How about that? Fernando Estelamora with a field goal to make this a four-point game. And the coaching staff told us what, Andrew? What did they really trust him up to? They said 35 it in. And twice now they've let him go from the 40-plus. Now, remember, in pregame, the wind was blowing in that direction behind his back. So maybe that influenced their decision to give him two shots at it. One for two, Fernando S. De La Mora. And what a way to go to the half for Morehouse. I mean, a terrific, terrific effort as far as I'm concerned by Morehouse in the first half. They could have been blown out, and they didn't allow it to happen. And now have some momentum down of the field. Steve White. Uh, all right, real quick, Coach. You, you score. You score on your first play of the offensive drive. You get the quick lead. Then the offense kind of sputters, and you hit another big play to score again. What do you have to do to get some consistency going? Well, I think the guys got to settle down. You know, it's first game, first half, national TV. Everybody's jacked up. Um, a quill glass is not playing. setting his feet, throwing the ball off his back foot. 
So he just got to settle down and make some throws, make some plays. Uh, tackle get beat there. We fumble there, you know. So uh, first game, I'm just, I'm a, you got to take your hats off to Morehouse. They're doing a great job. They're prepared. They're mixing up the, the disguise and the coverages and the fronts. They jump in and out of coverages. But we just got to settle down and play Bulldog football and execute. All right, Coach, still up 14 to 10. We're going to send it back to Andrew, but thanks a lot, Coach. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Conal Manor. Last year, Morehouse pulled off the upset of Arkansas Pine Bluff out of the swag 34 30 down here but with momentum alabama a&m 14 to 10 at the half coming up the battle of the bands the inaugural black college football hall of fame classic fantasy live premieres tomorrow at six only on nfl network All right, welcome to the Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic, where Alabama A&M leads Morehouse 14 to 10 at the half. Games being played here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You know, American history cannot properly be told about the impact of historically black colleges from the Jim Crow laws that forced the creation of institutions of higher learning for people of color to the impact of the alumni from HBCUs. The same can be said about the NFL and college football and how it is great because of the impact of the players and coaches from HBCUs. Here are just a few of them to tell you more. HBCU. HBCUs. Historically. Black college. The university. When you see the Georgias, the Oklahomas, the Alabamas, some guys would have been going to historical black college because that's the only place they could have went. Back in the 60s, during the civil rights movement, there was not only intimidation, but there was racial slurs and things like that. You know, when I came in the league in 1978, I was one of three black quarterbacks. First black quarterback to start a Super Bowl, the first black quarterback to win a Super Bowl. I, I think I was blessed, but I also know that was a price to pay to get there. Jerry Rice is unstoppable. Nothing is given to you. You have to earn everything. You got to believe in yourself. To be the best at what you do, you got to create the mindset first. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. I think HBCUs are more important now than ever. A lot of people don't think that they're prevalent because kids got the right to go anywhere. And they're correct. We could go anywhere. But anywhere is not good for all of us. You don't measure where you are by the places you're allowed to go. Colts linebacker Darius Leonard, Bears running back Tariq Cohen, and Colts safety Antoine Bethea, they're just a few of the current NFL players who went to HBCUs, and they chose to go there because of the experience and the education. And now there's also the pageantry, and for that, let's go to the Morehouse College House of Funk Marching Band.
You just up Morehouse Marching Band. Next up, Alabama AM here at the Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic. We're at halftime of the Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic, where Alabama AM leads Morehouse 14 to 10. And now here's the Alabama AM marching maroon and white.
Washington, and thank you, alumni. It is the inaugural Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic here in Canton, Ohio. A Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Canton, Ohio. Looks like the rain is kind of tapering off a little bit. This is Charles Davis. I'm Andrew Siciliano. Steve Weich joins us here as well with Alabama A&M with the lead 14 to 10. Charles Davis, but Morehouse is playing well. Alabama A&M the Bulldogs got out of the gate early with a couple of big plays They certainly did and it, it was keyed by a special teams play the kickoff return by, by Gary Quarles and when he get it out past midfield kind of Maynard said let's go get it right now and That's exactly what they did first play of the ball game on offense Akeel glass number four finds Zabrian Moore number eight And he just runs away from the Morehouse defense and we're 15 seconds in and it's seven zip play fake Xavier Moore and Xavier Moore had a big first half for Alabama A&M five catches overall 103 yards one touchdown that one appeared to be but they called him just short of the goal line after he beat holding to get downfield and it was in ports punched in by Mr. Bentley number one for the second touchdown for A&M. Connell Maynard says he'd like to see his quarterback Akeel Glass hang out of the football a little bit better those three fumbles as well as we see the stats here Morehouse hasn't gotten much done on the ground only 42 rushing yards but 180 for each team through the air and you see the turnovers the three Alabama A&M turnovers that is how Morehouse is hanging around here had a field goal right before the half to make it a 14 to 10 game and now Morehouse after winning the coin toss and deferring granted that didn't work it will work here getting the ball to start the third quarter I mean getting the ball only down seven I mean now I'm down four after a tough first half trying to move the football but their defense hung in as we talked about throughout the first half and those three turnovers they were created by Morehouse how about the big hit by Demetrius Lofton right near the end of the half to knock the ball free of a kill glass and kill a threat by AM. and Morehouse open six and oh a year ago under Rich Freeman finished seven and three first winning season since 2014 trying to pull another upset here as a D2 school in week number one Santo Dunn in traffic returns this opening kickoff to the 26 yard line and that is where Morehouse will open things up Morehouse has used both quarterbacks today both Michael Sims and Jalen Brown I mentioned Steve White here. He is on the sideline. Yeah, Andrew, I just spoke to Morehouse coach Rich Freeman, and he said that defensively they are really going to start dialing up some stunts and to do some things to get uh, defensive end uh, Demetrius Lofton, who had that big hit, to try to get him in single blocking situations because they really feel that one on one he cannot be touched in this game. So they're going to keep on trying to do that. He also said they're going to continue rotating their quarterbacks, and he made it a point to tell me that, yeah, Jalen Brown's a runner. But he can also throw the ball. He's a very effective player, so look for some things for him, not just running the ball when they rotate him in there with Michael Sims. That's a great plan. I think it'd be nice for Jalen Brown to get more than one or two plays at a pop, though. I mean, if you're going to get him in there, give him a chance to run that series and see what he can break free. Santo Dunn getting a chance to run here with four yards over the right side. Morehouse is hanging in here. Yeah, they've hung in there because... These kids are tough now. I mean, when you think about the requirements of what it takes to play at Morehouse, they, they have a couple bad ones. They're not going to give up. And I thought Michael Sims, after a couple of early bobbles, really started to get into sync and showed his poise and his calm and made some nice plays with his arm and with his head. And what a nice catch there at the end of the half by Reese Knuckles, which helped set up the field goal that had Morehouse running into the halftime, only down four. Can I say Reese Knuckles is my new favorite name in college football? Oh, there's no doubt about it. How could it not be? A.J. Smith goes in motion. Done on the carry again. Look, Morehouse obviously down four. Morehouse knows with a gain of three there for Dunn. They're going to win this game. They've got to eat a little clock here as well. Yeah, and I think what they've also got to do is understand that every possession is darn near crucial because of the way A&M strikes you don't want to be as like a half-court basketball team versus a pressing team, you know half-court You better take advantage of every one of those sets that you run 
because you're not getting nearly as many shots up. And I think it's same here with Morehouse. Better run the football as well, which has been their bread and butter. Sims on the rollout. They move the pocket. Sims throws downfield. Ball deflected, incomplete, in and out of the hands of Gooden at first, and it's going to be fourth down. Nice report by Steve about Morehouse and what they plan to do on defense. I get the sense that A&M is going to get tighter and tighter in coverage and dare Michael Sims to try and throw the ball over their heads as opposed to getting passes thrown in front of them. You know, make those receivers go ahead. Okay, take it upfield. Now let's see how, let's see what the percentage is downfield as opposed to underneath high percentage throws and they get that catch after the run, I mean run after the catch. Brian Jenkins is dangerous here, averaged nearly 14 yards a return last year. Oh, and he gets drilled. And that's going to be a flag. You cannot do that. Yeah, that'll be kick, kick catch interference and that'll be 15 yards. Look like Jonathan Mathis arrived not just a bit early, way early. Kick catch interference. Kicking team, number 22. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. It was Jonathan Mathis who came calling early. Jenkins had a 16-yard return earlier. He does not call for the fair catch. And Mathis made him pay. Just lit him up. You know, when you watch the replay, though, he wasn't nearly as early as no, I that, thought. That, that timing. The timing was, was a way better than what I thought initially. It was kick catch, catch interference, but not nearly as egregious as I first thought. So it's midfield after the 15-yard penalty, and now Jenkins stays in there. He's the motion man, number two. Glass will throw back to him, but throw it in the ground. And that's what Connell Maynard told our Steve Weich at the end of the first half. Footwork has been a problem for Akil Glass because when he wanted it downfield and he adjusted to throw it out into the flat, the footwork wasn't there, couldn't get anything on the throw. Should be an easy throw. Maynard, who once threw 54 touchdowns in an arena football league season, says he wants perfection from his quarterback, and that's a throw that his quarterback should definitely make. This one, he does make to his tight end, the guy, Charles, who you wanted more from, Kendrick Johnson. Why? I, they need to throw the ball to him a lot more. I can't imagine in the swack with his size and catching a building catch radius, that the matchups wouldn't be favorable for them most times when they throw it to him. Gain of 13, and now Abdul Fatai Ibrahim. A little pushing and shoving after that. The walk on at a Miramar High School in Florida. Guy just showed up, made the team, and why not at 6'1, 190? And he's already made plays today. Two and a half minutes into the third quarter. Opening drive for Alabama AM. Morehouse 38. Bentley breaks loose. Jordan Bentley down the sideline. Tackled at the 10 yard line. Or he was going all the way. A gain of 28. It looked like this play was going to be stopped. So he gets right in there. But great second effort. And I think it was Jonathan Mathis, number 22. Unable to wrap up on Bentley, and he continues down the sideline for a big gainer. And Marcus Gibson was the guy, the DB, that ran him out of bounds and prevented him from getting all the way into the end zone. Cameron Evans with the backfield penetration here and a couple of flags. And that could be a problem because he may have come up and gotten, him, gotten a penalty for what he may have said when he got up off the pile. Two flags. Larry Smith is our official today, Big Ten crew. Still trying to sort it out. And I know people want to point to the officials about how many flags are on the ground. Officials don't want to throw flags. <laughs> if you create penalties, they have to throw them. Believe me, they'd like to go through an entire game and never pull it out of their pocket. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number nine. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Demetrius this Lofton. is number nine's first penalty that will lead toward disqualification. So you get Steve those White spoke of earlier. And Lofton, they're their best pass rusher. Steve Weiss said to Coach Rich Freeman they want to single him up and pass rush, but he just ended up giving up big yardage with an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. He puts it on the sixth glass under pressure, lofts it into the end zone, and that is caught for a touchdown. And another and flag. A flag. 
It's Albert Connell for now. Don't put that score on the board yet. During the play, holding. Defense number 20. Now you can. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, touchdown. Defensive holding. Makai Page and Albert Connell, the son of the former Redskins wide receiver, gets into the end zone. Connell wide open in the back, and the hold was right there, 21, I believe. And that's Makai Page trying to hold the receiver downfield, but Connell unimpeded into the end zone wide open. And the extra point extends the Alabama A&M lead to 11. A touchdown for the Bulldogs on their opening drive of the first quarter. A touchdown for the Bulldogs opening drive, third quarter, 21 to 10. Alabama AM has extended its lead here. 21 to 10, a six-play drive. It goes 50 yards, 139 off the clock, and the second touchdown pass of the day for Akeel Glass. 11-point lead now, 11.37 to go here in the third quarter. The inaugural Black College Football, the Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic. I beg your pardon, Charles Davis, Steve White, from Andrew Siciliano, Santo Don, a little bobble on the kickoff there. He eventually gathers and gets across the 30-yard line. Nice little roll out there after the play fake by Keel Glass. Wide open is Albert Connell, which leads to Albert Connell getting the the belt that they award guys after big plays. And is that a touchdown belt? I, I don't know. At this point, I can't keep track of belts, <laughs> chains, backpacks, thrones. Did you ever get an interception belt at Tennessee? No, you know what they said? What they said? That's what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you're not you're not going to go off on a rant about kids these no, days, are you? No, 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 not at all. Enjoy because, it because what it, what motivates them and what makes them happy is what you should be doing. Exactly. Our, our coaches they they didn't see it quite that way. No Different time frame. They didn't. Although it would make Frank Bailey happy to get a little bit of extra yardage there. Not much going over the left side. It's the DB Mike Mills, the Ohio kid there. I'll leave it with this. There's some of these things that are way better ideas than others. Okay. okay? And we'll Which do you that. prefer? I, listen, whatever makes the team happy. Okay. But my alma mater at one point had a, a garbage can that you put turnovers in or what have you, which was a bad idea from the word go. Your alma mater being Tennessee. Yes, and that was a few years ago, and that was a bad idea right from, right from the beginning, and it got scrapped pretty quickly, and it should have. It had no effect on yesterday's outcome, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I am truly, well, truly we probably we could have used We could have used it yesterday. <laughs> yes, it could have. Frank Bailey with a big hole there up the gut, and Bailey who had a very good first half. Uh, well, very big first half at one point. They had a gain of 14 there. Forty-six yard line now. Morehouse down double digits. Sims, the lefty, throw to the outside, and Reese knuckles with the reception. A flag here, however, on the near side of the field, and it's going to be against Morehouse. And this is a big drive for Morehouse too. The eligible receiver downfield, offense number 83, was covered up, went downfield on a forward pass. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Brown the tight end. And what that means is that the receiver on his side was up on the line of scrimmage instead of one yard off, which means he covered the tight end and made him an ineligible receiver inside. So that's it. The call goes against number 83, but it's actually against the receiver on that side of the field for, for incorrectly lining up. But I mentioned a minute ago that this is a big drive for Morehouse, and here's why. A&M comes out second half, establishes, put, puts it in the end zone. Now they're up 11. Morehouse has to have a good drive here, get some points, because otherwise I feel like AM is finally starting to get it in gear and look a little more, they look a little more consistent on offense running the ball. Morehouse almost double the time of possession in the first half. Need to eat the clock here, but they need to eat the clock productively as Bailey gets a couple of yards 
to the left here. It's one thing to run time. It's another thing to march down the field and get in the end zone. They need to do both here, especially after AM scored so quickly here. Look at that time of possession, 21 to 12 as it stands now. Yeah, and, and in this case, I think that Morehouse looks at time of possession as something that's significant for them. AM doesn't care about time of possession. They just care about points and explosive plays. Flag out could be a free play. So why not take a shot downfield and over the head and incomplete for Knuckles? And we got another flag. Offside. Defense, number nine. Five-yard penalty remains. Second down. Marquise Price jumped. Did he jump or did he just line up incorrectly? It was the left end. I saw some movement. Okay. I think he moved. And I think Sims recognized it. And made, heads made up play, play by the quarterback and, and, and took a shot downfield. Took the big shot. But they talk about how cerebral Michael Sims is. They're on. Listen, he came to Morehouse in academic scholarship before evolving into a football quarterback there. So <laughs> they, they will actually adjust practice times if he has some big time community service work to do to make sure they have their quarterback on the field. A Morehouse man in every way, shape, and form done here with no wear to run. Adrian Portlock has been all over the field. So too has Kelly. So too has Holloway. Nowhere to go and it brings up third and around nine. Watch to the left of your screen. Watch number 30 in red. Blows up the block and makes the tackle. Right here. Watch Portlock. Watch the first initial play on the stalk block by the receiver. He just takes Gachaba and throws him back about five yards and then gathers up Santo Dunn. Adrian Portlock is having himself a day here in Canton, Ohio. And yeah, he's got about 30 pounds on Gachaba. He has a pick there and a big tackle as well. And now throw back to A.J. Smith, the wide receiver who came in motion. That was actually a lateral. So that goes as a running play, not a pass. And Smith barely gets back across the line of scrimmage. Armani Holloway, the linebacker Holloway brother with the tackle. And that's going to bring up fourth down. So Morehouse with two drives here in the third quarter. And nothing doing for Rich Freeman's team. And Fernando Estelamora is now out the punt. And it appears they put the pressure back on their defense because a and going to come out ready to go. Ryan Jenkins was drilled and was called for kick-catch interference last time. They're going to punt it to the other side, and Jenkins is going to run to the top of your screen. That's going to go out of bounds at the 13-yard line on the bottom of your screen. And that is where we will be when we get back here, third quarter in Canada. So, earlier, Akeel Glass, third quarter touchdown to Albert Connell, 21 to 10. If you recognize the name, yes, he is the son of the former Redskins and Saints wide receiver. And this off Twitter, I'm watching Alabama AM and and Morehouse on NFL Network. First thing I think of is, Charles, I watched his daddy play for the Redskins. I am officially old. <laughs> yeah, that moment hits a lot of us at different times, doesn't it? Happened on the field before the game. You know, you're like, oh, man. Had a Morehouse player come over and say, I watched you growing up. Yeah, that one, that one hurt. <laughs> and I think I said something like this. So we're officially old. He goes, no, I'm just 20. <laughs> he didn't quite understand. <laughs> you don't know what we mean by we're officially old. Uh, Gary Quarles, however, is not old. He's a sophomore guy who had a huge play to start this game on a kickoff return. Gets a couple of yards to open up this drive. For Alabama a and now leading Morehouse 21 to 10, midway through the third quarter here in Canton, Ohio. Charles Davis, Steve White's down to the sideline. I'm Andrew Siciliano. Thank you for spending part of your holiday weekend with us. What we hope will be a brand new and a fantastic tradition at that. The Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic here in Canton. Nothing doing there for Brian Jenkins. Marquise Dewart swallowed him up. That'll bring up third and eight. The words had a nice day. He's been involved in a lot of plays inside. Hard for people to move him. And Demetrius Lofton, number nine, also making himself available. May Jenkins turn back upfield and forces this third and eight. It's Keel Glass and the entire offense looks back to the sideline to get the play from Dwayne Taylor and from Connell Maynard. 
And that play is Brian Jenkins with blockers behind Ibrahim. Look at that nice move. Little hop step to stay in bounds. And to get a first down for AM. Gain of 13. Brian Jenkins not only has the speed, he's shown a couple of times today, not only on punt returns, but in the pass game, but he has the moves as well. But 48 passes a year ago, and only 5'8", 160. Glass hits Jenkins again, who makes a move, turns it upfield, and gets around seven on first down. Kill Glass, who Maynard said he wants him to mind his footwork, cut down on the mistakes, has seemingly been doing better with that here in the third. Coming up on five to go in the third quarter. It's Brian Jenkins again. They're just feeding him. Steve White, what do you have? Hey guys, so I was talking to Bill Hayes, uh, the Black College Football Hall of Fame legend and head coach who coached Connell Maynard and hired him to his first coaching job. As we're seeing him feed the ball to Jenkins, he said that is a Maynard trait. If he's got a hot guy or someone with an isolation, uh, you know, favorable advantage, he's going to feed him. So they're going to keep on giving him the ball. That's the plan coming out in the second half, and that's why we're seeing number two getting his hands all over things. Steve, it feels like a lot. Of, feels like basketball, doesn't it? You know, when you've got a hot hand and you start running those plays and those sets for him to make sure he continues to touch it. And that's what Connell Maynard's doing now. And I think that was a really nice play there, guys, by Keel Glass. Yep, You're going to look back it. later and not understand, oh, it's an incompletion. But they had the play covered that was going to Brian Jenkins. <laughs> and he saw that, recognized it, threw it in the ground to avoid an interception or a bad play. Lived to fight another down, second and ten, as an intelligent play by Keel Glass. And that hey. was after a completion of the previous play. Sorry, Steve, to Zabrian Moore, who had the long touchdown early. Yeah, let's see if they use Jenkins as a decoy right here, because it's clear now that they, there it is. There's the fake to Jenkins, and there's a deep throw. Wide open. Wide there it open. Is. And a touchdown to Kendrick Johnson. Great call, Steve Weish. And at about time, Kendrick Johnson gets the ball thrown to him. 43-yard <laughs> touchdown. And then a flag, I'm guessing, on the celebration. Steve, I'd come down it's and trade places play. with you, but it's raining. It's a touchdown. <laughs> no, no, it's not raining, Gerald. It's, it's all good. No, nope, it's raining. It's not raining. Hey, hey, everything is good. 79. Steve. This is number 79's first foul that will lead toward disqualification. Okay. That's another unsportsmanlike conduct foul, guys, against Morehouse. A little head and shoulder fake. And our official, Larry Smith, is telling us how that can lead to disqualification if another one's accumulated. But a terrific call by Steve. Use, they use Jenkins like crazy. They fake the throw to Jenkins. Throws the defense up. And Kendrick Johnson, the big tight end, who is split out wide like a wide receiver, gets it into the end zone and puts another six and now seven on the board for Alabama a and Alabama a and has two long touchdowns, 40 and 43 yards. Steve Weich has been on the mic for both. 28 to 10. Alabama a and leading 28 to 10 for 28 remaining in the third quarter here after a touchdown to Kendrick Johnson 14 plays 137 yards in these last two drives and a couple of touchdowns one to Kendrick Johnson and it should be corrected one earlier to Anthony Howard not to Albert Connell that is on me. Well, they both wear My apologies. Both wearing 87. There's a lot of maroon. I here. will take the 15 yards on that one. You won't regardless. Take it, you won't take it alone. We're all here together. A lot of maroon here. Just got it trans, you know, trans transposed, I guess you would call it. Backwards. It's okay. Anthony Howard and your family, congratulations. Touchdown. And Santo done with this return. Now on the 35-yard line with a flag from the backside from the near sideline out to the 36. Holding. 
Receiving team number 18. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. All right, so Morehouse called for holding. They back them up. Every Sunday, NFL Game Day Live brings you up to the minute scores, fantasy stats, mid game analysis. It's NFL Game Day Live on NFL Network Sunday at 1. And that first Sunday is coming up one week from today. Yeah, so everybody gets in motion Thursday night. Get it all going. Green Bay in Chicago. For the greatest year of NFL football. The greatest rivalry in this guy's humble opinion in the history of the National Football League. All right, so they're going with the big stack here on their formation. Four to one side. Isolated guy on the other. A lot of bubble screens come out of this. With the quarterback, Mike Sims, who throws it to the wide side of the field. He throws it to the left, and I've said it a hundred times. He's a natural lefty. And that's Reese Knuckles there with the reception. That is so much like Mississippi Valley State under Archie the Gunslinger Cooley. Willie Satellite Totten at quarterback. Jerry World Rice out at wide receiver. They had to find ways to isolate Jerry Rice. They did it a lot like this. Get him by himself because you pull, have to pull the coverage over here with all the receivers to that side. You can't just go double him when you have that many receivers in one spot. Michael Sims, nowhere to go. He's going to get back to the line of scrimmage before being brought down. Jerry Rice, by the way, a member of both the Black College Football Hall of Fame and the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Mason Ellis there with the tackle. Just read a poll about someone's opinion about the top 100 players in Black College Football history. Had Jerry Rice at number one. And that makes Walter Payton number two. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty strong list, isn't it? I, I guess there is no wrong answer. No, there is no wrong answer. That's one person's opinion. And those 100 that are on there, you can fight about what numbers. And not a single one of them didn't belong. Not at all. Third and five. Sin floats it up for Dunn. And Dunn gets separated from the football incomplete. You saw that ball hanging there. And so did Amari Holloway, who came calling. Sure did, and boy, he put a put a nice pop on him, and an excellent job by the official on that side, being right on it and signaling incomplete right away. Never able to bring the ball in totally and tuck it. As an incomplete pass, not a fumble. That's a really nice job there. Who was that? That was the head linesman, Kevin Moss, with a nice call. Calling out the officials for their nice call. Listen, you know how much grief they get all the time, and 98.9% .9 of the time they're getting it right. Only thing for Larry Smith will have to go down ice down his throat tonight with all the penalty calls he's had to make. Uh, Brian Jenkins will call for a fair catch and catch it on a knee near the 30. Alabama AM getting the ball back with the lead 28 to 10. Trying to do John Stallworth, among others, proud here as the Black College Football Hall of Fame is now here in Canton. Look at the bus room. Jerry Rice, there he is, number one on the list. It's 28 to 10 here, third quarter, Alabama A&M over Morehouse in the inaugural classic for the Black College Football Hall of Fame, whose 2019 class, Charles Davis, Steve Weich, looked like this, pretty impressive. Yeah, Emerson Boozer from Maryland State, now Maryland Eastern Shore. Rich Tombstone Jackson from Southern, who should be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Career cut short because of a knee injury, but he played well enough that he should be getting a lot more consideration. Frank Lewis from Grambling. He was one of Shaq Harris's great receivers. Shaq told me before the game, when I saw Frank Lewis on one side and Charlie Joyner on another, I knew it'd be a really good day. <laughs> hey, hey, Charles, you know, when we do this event, you know, because we co-MC and we're on the selection committee as well, it, it's amazing what we go through, because you mentioned Emerson Boozer went in. Emerson is ill. So, Charles, why don't you let everybody know who accepted his ring and jacket for him this year? Yeah, Emerson, as Steve said, Emerson couldn't make it. His family couldn't be there because they want to be with Emerson. Holding, holding. Offense, number 71. Tenure up Tony from the previous spot. Replay, first down. Our, the fourth member of our broadcasting team heard from once again. Yeah, our referee today, <laughs> Larry Smith. It was it was uh, Joe Namath, his teammate with the Jets. Joe, that bond, his teammates and his friends. He wanted to be there to accept it, and that was a really cool thing to have Broadway Joe come rolling into the Black College Football Hall of Fame ceremonies.
and, and be there for his teammate. And we've heard from both coaches here, both Freeman and Mayner, about what it meant for these student athletes, ball alone and complete, for these student athletes to visit the Pro Football Hall of Fame yesterday after arriving in Canton. To not only see the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but to see now the Black College Football Hall of Fame, Steve. And the look of awe, I think, on a lot of their faces where both coaches said, hey, you two can be here one day. This is a small step in that journey here, but you can eventually get here. And, and that's a great point, Andrew, because, you know, a lot of people think that, wow, the Black College Football Hall of Fame has a finite uh, time frame because black colleges aren't as necessarily as important as big as they were in terms of major college Here we go again, Steve. Here's the Bentley. Play. There it is. <laughs> Swing pass Dump right there. I tell you what real quick look at the look at the pep and the step of Akil glass now compared to the first half yeah. I mean he's moving like their drum their drum major in the marching band at halftime and Steve He had that first throw here that early throw where his footwork wasn't good, but since then he started to get his rhythm back He's hitting those nice easy shots and they're running pretty well with the ball after And that's a gain of 33. They tried again. the pump fake to the flat and tried the deep ball And this away. time it's gonna be intercepted. It's yep. Julian Turner Julian Turner. That's their big play look guys I've covered a lot of this type of football in my career and even though Alabama it looks like they've got a and has got a comfortable lead It can swing in a heartbeat like this one turnover and boy, Connell Maynard is all over a kill glass again. So that, that high stepping glass is doing right now has got a, uh, a chin down and an ear full. <laughs> boy, he threw it into traffic. Well, as you said, they tried to go back to the well with a pump fake and tried to go deep, but that was taken away deep. Excellent coverage by Morehouse. Nice job there. That was Edward Nelson. They're all active linebacker. Watch 28. <clears throat> See the play on the football that he makes there? Uh, look, Edward Nelson is one of these guys. You know, we mentioned all the well-rounded players from Morehouse. He's a Gates scholar. He's one of those Bill Gates scholars who was so fantastic in high school. He got his entire education paid for. And those are very, very difficult and highly competitive scholarships to get. And he's one of them. Again, a lot of well-rounded people. The backup quarterback in for Morehouse now with that with that throw. Jalen Brown, who throws it low to Santo Dunn. We see Julian Turner there on the sideline. Maybe he can make a movie about his turnover chain. He's a <laughs> filmmaker, went to the White House. He has done a short on Sesame Street, all because he made a video that went viral for his biology class. And Charles Brown is staying in at quarterback, so you're getting your wish. He's getting getting more than one play. And, we, and I told you, Rich Freeman, their head coach, said he's going to get some opportunities to throw it here. That makes sense. I mean, you, I mean, no quarterback really works well with one play and out. Here's Jalen Brown keeping his eyes downfield and thrown to the sideline. That's a nice catch that they give to him by A.J. Smith, and they give it to him. Let's get back to Julian Turner here. It went viral because he took a rap song and he made a video about mitosis, which honestly, I don't understand everything that Julian Turner is rapping about. All I know is that if the mitosis isn't right, you end up dead. Yes. And that's I, all I need. That's all I need to hear. That'll get me to class. If my genes are left unread, all my cells are dead. So all the while getting hyphy. Yes. Congratulations to him, though. I mean, you talk about a young man who's got a plan. We got a whistle here. Julian Turner, one of the more impressive student athletes you will see playing college football. No doubt about it. Anywhere. Yeah, we got another penalty right here. Another thing to add on to the Julian Turner story. We, we know this guy. Ball start. Offense number seven. Five yard penalty remains. Third down. Okay, we got a we got a false start, so they're moving behind the stick. But Julian Turner also, he wants to be a filmmaker. He skipped their big game against T Tuskegee to hang out with yeah, Tyler two, Perry. That was two seasons ago, right? Two seasons yep, ago, two he missed seasons the ago. game to hang out with Tyler Perry that day. Well, it was an and, internship. And yeah, I, I get it. I'm just telling you, in this, when you're at Morehouse and they tell you academics are important, they walk the walk. Hey, Charles, when right? I start They walk the walk because it was important enough that he missed a football game. And he did and had no repercussions with that. Yeah. Brown to the sideline again and another. They're going to have to go for it here. It's Malik Merchant, the wide receiver. Yeah, they're short, but they're going to go for it. It's going to be right short, here. and it's going to be fourth and around three. They'll keep the offense on the field down 18 here, final minute, third quarter. And don't be surprised if Coach Eastman now decides maybe he likes to lead with his defense line. He may want to try and heat up this quarterback who hasn't played on this level yet. But that's where Turner's legs could come in. Excuse me, Brown's legs could come in. They got to come up the middle, Charles. This looks like it's set up to be a, a quarterback dive up the middle. 
His legs could come into play on this. Nope, one. they're rolling him. Jalen Brown rolling left. He's oh. a righty. Loft him deep downfield. Throw a flag or throw a touchdown. Santo done. And there is a flag as well for likely pass interference. Just but for now, it's a 36-yard touchdown. Just pick it up and let's keep moving, folks. They had it matched up. They had done matched up pass on the inside linebacker. A fantastic Defense, read right there. A great read on that throw. The play. Steve, I would say an even better catch because that ball was underthrown. The defender never found the football, but Santo Dunn did and made the adjustment. Watch. Well, Tramel Gooden took Great two guys. Job there. I mean, Dunn found the football, and the defender, Adrian Portlock, who's had a terrific day, did not. And, and he that gave turned him into a big, but it turned into the touchdown. And he hit him with the AI step over on Ty Lue <laughs> on the celebration. They looked as if they may go for two, and now motion the kicker and the holder back and take the extra point and make it once again an 11 point game. So 28 to 17, they convert. Morehouse does on fourth down when they needed it to stay in this game. And they go back to their money man, Santo Dunn, who at 5'7", comes back for that football, gets separation, locates the football, and backs into the end zone. As a former defensive back, I can tell you, if you are running towards a receiver and the back of your helmet is showing to a quarterback, you are at your most vulnerable. Because in today's football, they tell you, if you see the back of the helmet of the defender, throw the football, throw it to the receiver, even if it appears he's covered. Because he has the ability to see back, and the defensive back does not. And the, and the receiver can uncover deeper into the route, as Santo Dunn did there for a touchdown. He caught two touchdowns a year ago, caught a 36-yard touchdown there. And after A&M came out and dominated the open way, back comes Morehouse. I'm loving this Morehouse Maroon Tigers team and how they are going about this game. I mean, yes, they are down on the scoreboard, but every time it looks like, hey, this thing could really distance itself. Onside yeah. kick, a little squibber, and a fair catch call. Sorry, Charles, but I hear your point. 1968, deep in the segregated South, students from the HBCU South Carolina State attempt to enter a whites-only bowling alley in a protest descends into tragedy. Orangeburg is the story of a dark moment, a lasting legacy, and the students and football players who stood together. That's coming up immediately following this broadcast. Orangeburg, an NFL Films production. It's must-see this evening. Take my word for it. Take all our words for it tonight on NFL Network. Pretty good Hall of Famers from South Carolina State. David Deacon Jones, national award for the top college player in HBCUs. Willie Jeffries, coach to Howard. South Carolina State, head coach of Wichita State at one point. One of the, I think at that time, the only black coach at a historically white college during that time frame. Actually went to my alma mater, Tennessee, with a quarterback named Prince McJunkin and scared the heck out of the volunteers. <laughs> As we see Julian Turner here from Morehouse who had that interception that led to the Santo Dunn touchdown to keep Morehouse in this game. His film company, if you want to look it up, by the way, Dreadhead Films. For Julian Turner? Yes.
Thursday. America's team versus America's worst nightmare. The 49ers are for dessert. Is it over too fast? Well, then chill your Reese's. You'll eat it slower. I wouldn't know. I swallow mine whole. Like a duck. Not sorry. Reese's. Saturday, NFL Network brings the history and tradition of Conference USA. And it all starts with an interstate clash between Grambling and Louisiana Tech. Touchdown! Saturday at 3.30, live on NFL Network. NFL Game Day Season Preview. Our crew gets you ready for the start of the NFL's 100th season. It's the most explosive football team in the National Football League. Touchdown, L.A.! NFL Game Day Season Preview, Tuesday at 9 on NFL Network. You know, today you have an opportunity to... To show AM, the, the pride of AM to a national audience. Have a good game. Concentrate on doing it one play at a time, doing your job one play at a time, and you'll win. You will win. And that's what we want to show the world today. This is your day, this is your time. Make the most of it. The great John Stallworth could not be here today to see his alma mater play, but he put that video on tape. And his Alabama AM team has a lead here. And on second down, Akil Glass, oh, almost had it to Ibrahim. He could not hang on. He had green grass in front of him if he could. And it's third and five. I think Jonathan Mathis may have affected that. He number did. 22. Tips it, and then Ibrahim tries to make the adjustment. It hits him right between the eight and the five. But he was expecting it outside, had to come back inside, and that threw him off. Mathis making the big play. Sorry, Charles Mathis, a senior. Ibrahim, a walk-on freshman in his first game. He won't be walking on for very long. No. He and his parents will be talking money with Coach <laughs> Maynard soon. And now Glass on the keeper and the wise slide. And he's going to get first down yardage there on third and around four and a half. And they're going to spot him where he began that slide, where his feet started. But it is enough to move the chains. And they keep it the tempo here. And Bentley off the pitch, but maybe too much tempo. And they weren't set. Bentley's got his hands out. As if to say, so does, so does Zabrian. We weren't set. False start on the offense, number eight. The player never got set prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty remains first down. And it was more. He's doing a lot of yet a lot of yelling, a lot of anger over there from Connell Maynard. They will be back to basics in their next practice. I will guarantee that. How to line up, how to break the huddle, how to be set before the ball snap. All these things that have piled up, and it look back at the penalties they've had today. That's going to be a lot of their practice time before they get ready for their next game. They fake it to Bentley, throw it to Jenkins with blockers. Jenkins at the 40. Jenkins cuts back inside. He is hard to bring down. Gets across the 30 for another first down for AM, a gain of 24. Another huge block by Kendrick Johnson, number 89. Look to the left of your screen right there. Another block here by Ibrahim. And there goes Brian Jenkins. Shifty, fast, tough, competitive. They like number two. You gotta like him. Down the sideline, intercepted. Another turnover for Morehouse. It's running the other way. Micah Page with a convoy. Micah Page. Makai Page tackled inside the 25. And another flag. A big time tackle at the end by number one Jordan Bentley, and then the flag came out. But what a play by Makai Page. During the return, sideline warning. Morehouse. I said he had a convoy. <laughs> yeah, he Some did. of it came from the sideline. Now, remember, Makai Page missed a lot of last season. Only played three games 2018 because of an ACL. Good pressure. DeWert, number 55, who's been in his face a lot. And look at Page. Excellent coverage. You see how he pinned Zabrian Moore to the sideline and had all the inside position? And when the ball hung up inside, 
Makai Page became the receiver, and then he became the runner afterwards. Monster play by Page, number 21. And a huge run back, and now Brown stays in the game. We haven't seen Michael Sims the last couple of drives. Dunn catches that one. He gets popped at the line of scrimmage, no game. Rich Freeman for now, as Page has that turnover chain. He's sticking with his number two quarterback, who said during the week they considered a starter, got reps with the number ones, battled Mike Sims throughout the summer. Sims won the starting job, held on to it. Jalen Brown is getting more than just a little work. Brown will take a shot. Brown almost intercepted. He wanted Gooden. Gooden, Gooden looking for a flag. What he needs to do is fight through that. Well, there is a flag on the far sideline now. Yeah, he wanted one in the vicinity where he was with Joshua and Williams, I believe. Williams had the coverage number 28. But Gooden at his size, fight through that. Go over the top and try and make a play. Just like a legal man downfield. Good to 6'4, 215. Joshua and Williams, number six feet tall. Downfield, number 83 was covered up, went downfield on a legal pass. That penalty's declined. Third down. Second time we've had that call. On Miles Brown that time. There. But again, it's not Miles Brown. He's the tight end. It's up to the wide receiver on his side to be off the line of scrimmage and make sure he's not covered up and thus rendered illegal. Or ineligible, I should say. As they all look to the sideline, play clock under 10 now for Morehouse. This is Jalen Brown, the transfer from Monroe Community College in New York. On third and 10, Brown, nice ball. Gooden catches on the sideline, out of bounds, near the five-yard line. And a first down for the Morehouse basketball player, a gain of 18. And Brown has provided a spark and he showed some intelligence and patience in the pocket here because he has excellent legs He could just take off and vacate but watch what he does Andrew keeps his eyes downfield Just slides to where it's open and throws a strike To Gooden, number seven Tramiel Gooden. Gooden called for the ball Brown found him. Gooden got the feet down turned it upfield Morehouse is moving Santo Dunn motions to the backfield. He takes it. No, it's Brown who keeps it Dunn ran into four guys. Brown got maybe a yard, second and goal. If you're if you're Morehouse, you have to have the idea that settling for three is just not an option. I mean, it'll get you within eight, but boy, what a wasted drive this would be. It would feel to them, I would think, if they can't find a way to punch this in the end zone. Let's see if they get good. Let's see if they get Brown, number 11, on the move again. Remember the fourth down throw for a touchdown. He was on the move to his left before he delivered the pass downfield. He is a better runner than a thrower, but he has made some passes on this drive, including one to Gooden for the first down, who motions to the bottom. Basketball player has a touchdown. Tramel Gooden at 6'4", 215, can create some space. He had five touchdowns a year ago receiving. Remember when I told him, I kind of scolded him a little bit about, hey, play through it. You're bigger and stronger than that DB. On that one, would you mention he's a basketball player at Morehouse, right? 20 starts last year. Watch how this play ends with him essentially boxing out the defender to Wheelie, uh Wilson. And that's all he did was he just went and set up, posted down on the block, and Brown found him. Folks, things have gotten interesting here in camp. Yes, they have, and the extra point now makes it a four-point game. Morehouse making this thing interesting. After Brown hits Gooden, his fourth catch of the day, 28-24. Can Morehouse upset a SWAC team week one for the second consecutive year? Well, to make it interesting here, Tramel Gooden's a basketball player. Use that six foot four frame, Charles Davis, to box out just like he did for 25 games last year. Yeah, 20 starts for Morehouse, average four points, two rebounds per game. A season high, dropped 17 on Benedict. So you know he can score just as he does in football. Remember, he caught the big Hail Mary last year to beat Miles on the last game, the last play of the game at Soldier Field in Chicago in a classic. 
And you want to talk about dedication, not only going to class, playing football. The season ended for football early November. Less than two weeks later, he's on the basketball court, and as you said, didn't miss a game. Amazing. And started 20 out of 25 of those games. There's Quarles, who had a big kickoff return to open the game across midfield. He's going to get a big hit and take it down to the 35. What do you have, Steve Weich? All right, that's right. I'm here with Pro Football Hall of Famer and Black College Football Hall of Famer Mel Blunt. First off, Mel, this, this game, I mean, it looked like Alabama had it in hand, and now here comes Morehouse. Well, it's a great play down there with the uh, defensive back getting the ball at the high point. That's a big turnover there, so got them back in the game. They were able to go down and score, and I'm impressed with Morehouse. I'm tell you, I didn't think that they would be this competitive, but they're doing a good job competing. Are you scratching your head why Coach Freeman didn't go for two? Well, I mean, I thought they were going for two, but obviously they think they can get the ball back with the turnovers that they're coming up with, so we'll see what happens. Just the fact that this game is that competitive, we're looking at the crowd, you and I are eyeballing it at about nine or 10,000. This is the first time they're having this classic here in Canton. What about the turnout? What about the excitement and, and kind of the seed that's been planted here? Well, we're all very excited. I'm on the board of the Black College uh, Hall of Fame, and I tell you what, uh, the Pro Football Hall of Fame, David Baker and those guys, his staff has done a tremendous job. We're excited. This thing is going to be big, believe me. Uh, we got three years here to do an experiment with it, and uh, I think with the teams that we're bringing in in the next two years and the word gets out, uh, the people in this region get excited about it. I think it's going to be something special. You know, I'm happy about one of those teams coming in next year, Mel. Well, Howard University. I, you know, they're a good program, and I think they, they'll be a good draw. And and I think it shows you with Morehouse, uh, which is not known for a football program, what kind of competition there is in these HBCU schools. And so I think it's going to be great. So I think anybody we bring in here is going to be great. And I think what's important is that the word get out and the kind of promotion and marketing that we're anticipating doing is going to be just a great uh, great thing. Well, if it's a great game like we're having right now as Alabama A&M tries to extend this lead, it's going to be good. Really appreciate you, Mel. Thanks. And Andrew, uh, doesn't Mel look like he could still step on the field to give a good 15 or 20 players? I was about to say that. I, I hope I look that good in my seven. He could. You know, in today's football, Steve, Mel would be a defensive end. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Charles said he'd be at the end in today's football. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, with, with, with his Everybody size. Rush guys. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and, by, and by the way, folks, that's 71 years young that yes. you just heard and saw. Can you imagine that? Sign me up, please. Can, As I, get, I, can, said, can I get in on the Mel Blunt gene pool? I hope I look that good. And you know what? I hope you look as good as his Morehouse defense there. They're forced to three it out, and he's going to get the ball back. 28-24. This is the dangerous Santo Dunn to the 15 with a fair catch. So, Morehouse, 9-17 to go. All kinds of time. Down only four. Back in Canton. No blunt. Still looking good. NFL Fantasy Live. Premieres tomorrow at 6, only on NFL Network. We've got a game. Alabama A&M over Morehouse 28-24, fourth quarter. Hey, coming up every Sunday, including next Sunday, week number one. Game day highlights on NFL Network. Extensive highlights of every game. NFL game day highlights Sunday at 7.30, only on NFL Network. Mahogany in motion, however, from Morehouse not included. Should be. Look, this game now, you know how Morehouse's defense did such a good job throughout this game, keeping them in it. Yes, sir. Now the yes. offense has picked up a spark with, with, with Jalen uh, Brown. Brown, number 11 in a quarterback. This game is now shifted to, it is on Alabama and ms defense to make plays. Not their offense, it's their defense. Jalen Brown with the keeper making another play. That's a first down keeper for around 11 to start this drive. I talked recently with Steve Weish's college uh, partner there at Howard, Jay Sky Walker, who covers black college football quite well. And he told me, look, the tradition at Alabama a and has always been defense. Now they have an offense to go to their defense. They've got to get back and we lean on that tradition right now because Morehouse's offense, 
they've caught their groove. Absolutely. You see the yardage on those last two drives. Give them even more as Brown will carry again. Two plays, two first downs, 27 rushing yards total on those two. 16 there. And the dual threat option of Jalen Brown. And look at how fast Morehouse is going now. They've got the momentum. AM trying to sub out on the defensive front. Now Santo Dunn on the end around. Dunn in space. Makes a cut. Makes a spin. Gets to the 40. Three plays. Three first downs. This one's 18. And I think it's fitting that number one Santo Dunn is playing here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He is old school, old time player. Does everything. Runs it, catches it, blocks, returns kicks. He would fit in quite well in leather helmets and a single wing for offensive attack. Gains of 11, 16, and 18 on three plays. We have an injury on the AM side. Get that taken care of and come right back with Santo Dunn and Morehouse. These men in motion. Rich Freeman told us he might play two quarterbacks. Not just to get a spark, but just to work in Jalen Brown. Well, the man on the left has given Morehouse a spark. Mike Sims watching on the sideline as we have three consecutive first downs to open this drive for Morehouse. 11, 16, 18, and then now on the fourth play, a pedestrian one-yard run. Last year, matter of fact, a year ago today, an upset. For D2, Morehouse over another SWAC school, Arkansas Pine Bluff. And everybody is home. What's the difference? Morehouse Division II, 36 scholarships. Alabama A&M, which would be FCS, Football Championship Subdivision, 1AA, 63 scholarships. Brown, little head and shoulder fake. And now buys some time and throws incomplete for Gooden, who had that touchdown earlier. And at one point in their history, they met yearly because they were in the same division, same conference. Both of them were in the SIAC, Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. Then Alabama A&M moved in 1998 to the Southwestern Athletic Conference, the SWAC, where they currently reside. And this is their first meeting since 1997 when they were both in the same conference, 24th meeting all time. And Alabama A&M has won 15 consecutive in this series. Morehouse trying to end that today, but down four, but with a little bit of momentum. Brown to throw with time. Now that pocket breaks down, and he will throw it away. So, he knew he couldn't get to the outside, made the smart move. Excellent pass rush, which helped keep him contained, but even better coverage on the back end. That's why he had nowhere to go with the football. I said at the beginning of this drive, this was going on the Alabama A&M defense. And after the three first downs on three plays, as you as you noted, Andrew, they stiffened out there just past midfield and forcing a punt. Now, if I'm Alabama A&M, I play punt safe here mm -hmm. and stay alert for a fake. At this stage of the game, 7-13 to go. And if I'm Morehouse, I do not give Brian Jenkins a chance to return. Estelle Lamora with a high kick. Jenkins underneath it will call for the fair catch and let it bounce and it will be down. Why did he grab it? On the 15. Why did he grab that? That's a mental error for Morehouse. He didn't mean to, he was doing his job. That's number 30, Mal Malik Merchant. But that ball should have, he should have let that bounce until it quit rolling. And there's Rich Freeman right now saying, hey, like your hustle down there, but why should you let it bounce? We could have used the field position. And I think he's trying to tell him he thought it was kicking back the other way. Probably would have gone an extra five, maybe ten yards. Malik Merchant, actually a teammate of the new quarterback, Jalen Brown, at Monroe Community College. I know that community in New college, York. not too far from where I grew up. So now it's all in a keel glass. Has the lead, but not nearly as comfortable as it was just a few minutes ago. Will open from the 15 and hand it to Jordan Bentley, running right. Sweep gets him around four. Demetrius Lofton, number nine there. We've called his name a lot today. 
So we keep talking about where this game goes, right? Alabama a ms defense got it done. I think it goes here now. Those big people right there. Can they affect and move the line of scrimmage, protect their quarterback, and help the run game? And what a play on the corner. Who was that? That was the guy. That was the interceptor. That was Makai Page, number 21, with a big-time play out on the corner. Blew up the blocker, knocked down the receiver, and caused a big loss for AM. Look at that play. He blew right up through Moore. Xavier Moore. Who had the touchdown earlier. Moore was trying to set up a block for Jenkins, and it blew up. And now it's going to be third and 13. But it's Morehouse defense. They have done yeoman's duty all game long. Can they do it again here on a big third down? Three and nine on third down. Can they get off the field? Give the ball back to Jalen Brown. Need the 25. Lofting, right sideline. Moore came back for the ball. No flag. Incomplete. Fourth down. And there's the right no call too. Daniel Norman in the coverage. Ball fell short, and Xavier Moore could not come back and get it. Watch Glass moving, and he throws as he's falling backwards. Doesn't get as much on it. Mo Norman right in the chest of Xavier Moore. Moore cannot get back to the football. A big fourth third down stop for Morehouse, and another punt for Alabama a and There was some contact. Norman, though, the sophomore out of Oakland with the coverage, and he gives Santo Dunn a chance to return this, and Morehouse is going to get the ball back with under six to go. Good return ball, too. Here's Dunn. Midfield. Dunn stays on his feet. Flag down. Dunn inside the 35 to the 31. But with 25 accepted penalties already, we could get a 26th 40-yard punt, 25-yard return for now. And with a returner like Dunn, you've got to get some air under it. You need hang time. You know, if you did that low liner, that gives him a chance to hit it on the run as he did there. During the return, personal foul, blind side block, receiving team, number 48. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. That's Javon Rembert there, and that is deadly. Down to Steve Weich. Hey, guys, I spent some time over on the Morehouse sideline when their offense uh, had the ball last possession. First off, starting quarterback, he's just there. They're, they're rolling with the backup. It looks like the whole way they see he's in a groove. But also, there were defensive players who were actually saying, and Charles, you felt this way before as a defensive player, as have I, I hope we don't get it because I want our D to go out there, get another pick, and to win this ball game. Well, they've got their confidence rolling, don't they, Steve? They, they are good about themselves. They really do. And here's another quick note. There's a uh, someone here from the NFL has got a little talent. I saw Browns DC Steve Wilkes in the stands. Well, he's here uh, taking in all the all the ambiance and everything of this Black College Football Hall of Fame classic as well. well. Any of these players would love to play in a Steve Wilkes defense. I can tell you that. I mean, he was with Carolina the one year as D coordinator. They get after the quarterback and harass people downfield. I have a feeling the Browns are going to play the, play the same way. Well, Steve Wilkes is watching Jalen Brown here take it. The Alabama A&M defense picked up eight on that last carry. 44 yards on the ground so far for Jalen Brown. who came off the bench for Mike Sims. He has six of ten passing for 69 yards and a couple of touchdowns, including one to make this a four-point game. And another to the expiration of the clock. whistle. Timeout. Morehouse. The first of the half. All right, 30 so seconds in length. Morehouse calls a timeout rather than get called for delay a game, which well, you know what is happens. costly. You know what happens, guys, is they get up there, and with today's football, they're all looking to the sideline. Is it the right play? Is it the wrong play? And then they sometimes run out of clock. Luckily, they got the timeout in before the penalty. But you hate to waste that timeout when you're trying to mount a comeback here. Fantasy football season is here, and our experts have all the insight you're going to need to blow out the competition. NFL Fantasy Live premieres September 2nd. That's tomorrow at a new time, 6 p.m. Eastern time on NFL Network. I have a draft tomorrow. Charles Davis, who should I take? I'm going to let you do that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't touch that because I'm not good at it. But right now, I know someone who is good, yeah. and they need to play from it. And that's Armani Holloway, number 20. He is their playmate. Levels on defense. Can he make a play and help this team out? Because Morehouse is rolling. He is the linebacker, and that is Albert Connell. And I mean it this time. 
with the catch and the run, and that's going to be a first down and a gain of 15. Steve Weiss just talked about the Morehouse defense and the, and the momentum that they feel and how they want to be the ones to make a play. They need to talk to their offense because what we're seeing right now is an offense that has that same type of enthusiasm and feel that they have the game in control themselves and they control their own destiny. These Morehouse men have some Morehouse momentum. A.J. Smith in motion. Stop me if you've heard this before. There's a flag on the play. There is a flag on the play. Ball start. Offense, number 30. Five-yard penalty remains. First down. 27th accepted penalty. Steve? For Alabama A&M on their defense, starting outside linebacker Marcus Cushing, number 57, he is out. We saw him on the last series go down. He's been having problems with cramps in his thigh. He took out, he took off his pads, but I'm watching him right now. He's putting them back on. We were told he wasn't coming back in, but you never know. He looks like he may give it a shot. He's got but as of right now, he's, he's suffering from some cramps. He's got a different plan. I see him getting on the bicycle, trying to work through those cramps with his thigh. That would be a big loss. He's made plays all over the field today. Another flag. Will this be number 28? Ball start. Offense, number 62. Five yard penalty remains. First down. That'll be JJ Syriac. Pound for pound, the best offensive lineman on this team, the right guard for Morehouse. His hands are up. What I do? And there's Cushney on the bike. Trying to work through it. About Santo Dunn, he's had a heck of a day. Can they get it in his hands again? He's number one, top of your screen. Instead, Brown throws to Connell back here, and Connell gives it up. Ball loose. I think Morehouse fell on it, though, and they did. They're going to keep it. They dodge one there. they will keep the ball on the 40. Nice hit right there. See the hand pop it out. That was number 36, Quan Travis Kelly, the linebacker. He pops the ball free. And then the scramble ensues. And the Maroon Tigers come up with it. So Morehouse down four, keeps it. But facing a second and 20. Had to burn a timeout earlier to avoid a delay a game. Brown to throw, step up on the pocket, flag out, gun over the middle, and a catch. Good Chaba has it at the 25, shy of the first down, about a gain of 17, but there's a flag back by the line of scrimmage on the far shift. side. Offense, five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Second down. All right. Is any of this, Charles, the fact that you have a backup quarterback in here that wasn't taking as many reps, or is this just sloppy? I would say yes, except in our conversation with the coaches, they talked about how many first-team reps Jalen Brown took during the fall camp. So I'm going to say, so ultimately, that leads me to no. Is it, you know, early game jitters? We're well past that. This is just general sloppiness at times now, but they've got to clean up before the next game. Morehouse, 18 flags. So, instead of third and short, it's second and 25, and Brown now stands in his own territory and fires to the outside. Dunn makes the first man miss, but then comes the Cavaliers. ...against him, I'm sure that was uh, weighing on him. That's dismissed. What happens, guys, is they get up there, and with today's football, they're all looking to the sideline. Is it the right play? Is it the wrong play? And then they sometimes run out of clock. Luckily, they got the timeout in before the penalty. But you hate to waste that timeout when you're trying to mount the comeback here. And then they sometimes run out of clock. Luckily, they got the timeout in before the penalty. But you hate to waste that timeout when you're trying to mount the comeback here. Fantasy football season is here, and our experts have all the insight you're going to need to blow out the competition. NFL Fantasy Live premieres September 2nd. That's tomorrow at a new time, 6 p.m. Eastern time on NFL Network. I have a draft tomorrow. Charles Davis, who should I take? I'm going to let you do that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't touch that because I'm not good at it. But right now, I know someone who is good, yeah. and they need to play from him. And that's Armani Holloway, number 20. He is their playmaker on two levels on defense. Can he make a play and help this team out? Because Morehouse is rolling. He is the linebacker, and that is Albert Connell. And I mean it this time with the catch and the run, and that's going to be a first down and a gain of 15. Steve Weiss just talked about the Morehouse defense and the, and the momentum that they feel and how they want to be the ones to make a play. They need to talk to their offense because 
What we're seeing right now is an offense that has that same type of enthusiasm and feel that they have the game in control themselves and they control their own destiny. These Morehouse men have some Morehouse momentum. A.J. Smith in motion. Stop me if you've heard this before. There's a flag on the play. There is a flag on the play. Ball start. Offense, number 30. Five-yard penalty remains. First down. 27th accepted penalty. Steve? For Alabama A&M on their defense, starting outside linebacker Marcus Cushing, number 57, he is out. We saw him on the last series go down. He's been having problems with cramps in his thigh. He took out, he took off his pads, but I'm watching him right now. He's putting them back on. We were told he wasn't coming back in, but you never know. He looks like he may give it a shot. He's got but as of right now, he's, he's suffering from some cramps. He's got a different plan. I see him getting on the bicycle, trying to work through those cramps with his thigh. That would be a big loss. He's made plays all over the field today. Another flag. Will this be number 28? Ball start. Offense, number 62. Five yard penalty remains. First down. That'll be JJ Syriac. Pound for pound, the best offensive lineman on this team, the right guard for Morehouse. His hands are up. What I do? And there's Cushney on the bike. Trying to work through it. About Santo Dunn, he's had a heck of a day. Can he get it in his hands again? He's number one, top of your screen. Instead, Brown throws to Connell back here, and Connell gives it up. Ball loose. I think Morehouse fell on it, though, and they did. They're going to keep it. They dodge one there. They'll keep the ball on the 40. Nice hit right there. See the hand pop it out. That was number 36, Quan Travis Kelly, the linebacker. He pops the ball free. And then the scramble ensues. And the Maroon Tigers come up with it. So Morehouse down four, keeps it. But facing a second and 20. Had to burn a timeout earlier to avoid a delay a game. Brown to throw, step up on the pocket, flag out, gun over the middle, and a catch. Good Chaba has it at the 25, shy of the first down, about a gain of 17, but there's a flag back by the line of scrimmage on the far shift. side. Offense, five yard penalty from the previous spot. Second down. All right. Is any of this, Charles, the fact that you have a backup quarterback in here that wasn't taking as many reps, or is this just sloppy? I would say yes, except in our conversation with the coaches, they talked about how many first-team reps Jalen Brown took during the fall camp. So I'm going to say, so ultimately, that leads me to no. Is it, you know, early game jitters? We're well past that. This is just general sloppiness at times now that they've got to clean up before the next game. Morehouse, 18 flags. So, instead of third and short, it's second and 25, and Brown now stands in his own territory and fires to the outside, Dunn. Makes the first man miss, but then comes the cavalry, led by Armani Holloway. And it's going to be third and around 21. Yeah, he, he, he was shaking Denzel Davis, number 45, as you noted in the open field. And then he said Holloway came, Marquise Price, number nine, showed up on the scene. Third down, and here's the tough part. And Steve Weiss had brought it up a little bit in the interview with, uh, I think, Mel Blunt about them not going for two last time. Because a lot of coaches don't want to go for two unless they absolutely have to. But if they'd gone for two and gotten it, field goal would be much more in play here. Four of 15 on third down. Brown flushed out. Brown's going to run, and then he's not going to get anywhere near the first down. Marquise Price gave pursuit and it is fourth down now let's see what they do i don't think you punt it here even though a minute 42 on the clock i think you've got to go for it even though it's a long distance deal because you know you're down four you're, there's no there's no guarantee you're getting the ball back with AM's offense would you have punted if you had that extra timeout if you had the extra timeout you would consider it the way your defense is playing but i don't think they can afford it here they need the 20 to keep it alive fourth and 17. Jamel Gooden, number seven, big body receiver. This could be his time. Jalen Brown, make a throw. You called it, Charles. Gooden to the one. Thirty-five. 
give the offensive line a lot of credit because they gave him plenty of time to step up and find his target and Gooden goes up the basketball player in him above the rim over Denzel Davis 45 and Desmond Fletcher 40 and now they are banging on the goal lines door officially it is the two-yard line done in the backfield done popped by Travis give him a yard second and goal Timeout, Alabama A&M, the first charge of the half, 30 seconds in length. So Alabama A&M burns a timeout. Can they make a defensive stand? One minute left. Toyota, let's go places. Today's Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic is presented by Toyota, let's go places. One oh four to go. They put four seconds back on the clock and Morehouse is threatening, threatening for another week one upset. That is Jalen Brown who has come off the bench in the second half in relief of the starter Mike Sims and sparked this offense for Rich Freeman. And they do have a fullback out on the field now. I think it was at 41. Jethro Georges, mm -hmm. so they're showing that they may want to run the football with a power set, but I think to the top of the screen, to the right, Jamel Gooden, number seven, they want to throw it up there and give him a chance against Holloway 10. They've got an opportunity. Dunn in the backfield, behind Brown on second and goal from the one. It is Santo Dunn into the end zone. And Morehouse has a lead. He got some air. What did the skateboarders call it? Big air? He got big air. This kid has been big in every way throughout this ball game. I, I said it earlier. It's fitting that he's playing here in Canton where football began because he is old school old time player does it all and the extra point is no good so a field goal now that is big beat them. that is big the extra point by Fernando Estela Mora no good after this airborne somersault touchdown from Santo Dunn gives Morehouse the lead Look at that. Stuck the line. I kind of stuck the line. We'll tell you, the, the offensive line did a nice job getting a stalemate and a little bit more to give him a space to fly through. But, boy, did he get vertical. And the Morales Maroon Tigers have a two-point lead. And then that crucial extra point, Francisco S. De La Mora hooks it off left. Looked like one of my one, one of my golf shots. Did someone get a hand on that one? Might have been. There? He someone, had someone. He had been perfect all day. He was 28 of 31 last year with extra points. Missed that one, and that could prove crucial. Take a look, because we were wondering if did someone get a hand on it. Let's see. He's pulling it left? No. I don't think I so. I think he just missed it. I think that, that cleared him. He just pulled it left. He just missed it. There was some penetration, but that ball got over the outstretched arm. See that, 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 that there? That's why I get five aside on the golf course, because... I'm going to pull it left, too. And here comes Quarles at a big return to start the game. Let's see if he can spark him again. The 30. Quarles spin. He's loose at the 40. And tripped up. He had some room if he got to the sideline. Elijah Perez with the tackle. 32-yard return. Let's put this to bed. Did someone get a hand on it? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I think uh -huh. it cleared him. I think it cleared him. He just pulled it left. All right. Here we go. Gooden came up big for Morehouse. He's their number one threat. Now, for Alabama AM, and the guy who's been all day has been number eight, Xavier Moore. And the second guy's been number two, Brian Jenkins. Moore wears eight. Jenkins wears two. Yeah, Jonathan Mathis, I think he's trying to walk off a cramp now for Morehouse. Got it up covering the last kickoff. Mathis has been big today for the Maroon Tigers. These guys have expended a lot of energy, a lot of emotion. Not surprised that cramps have come into play here in the season opener. Temps around 80 when we kicked off. Humidity. 
in the 60s. We had some rain throughout the first half and into the third. Most of that's gone away, though, Steve Weich. On the uh, Alabama AM sideline, and as de dejected as you think they would be, they are not. They're poised. They're going through all the execution to set up the field goal. Um, if they get close, I mean, they're prepared. They're not hanging their heads down like they were in the first half when some things weren't working their way. And they have a kicker in Spencer Corey. Steinel Maynard told us could be good from 50. Steve, if they get the attempt, which way is the wind blowing for him now? Will it be in his face? Great question, Charles. It's actually still. It has been still most of the second half. So there is no breeze, so conditions. They're all they're all fine for everybody. Equal way, no win. Okay, good tackle out on the sideline there by Morehouse. Edward Nelson there has been all over the field. You see the flag. As Steve says, not a lot of win. Jenkins had that one. They're going to give him four on first down. Look at the clock. 46 seconds. Two timeouts remaining for each team. 50-yard field goal. You're looking at the 32 from Morehouse. Caught over the middle. And that's going to move the chains. And, and that's going to stop the clock, which is huge. That is Ronnie Howard. I beg your pardon. No, for Alabama A&M. That is Malachi Oswesky. First time we've called his name today. Clock is running. Under 30. They snap it at 22. Complete. And a first down and then some. Odu Hilaire with that. And that will stop the clock at 16 after a gain of 17. And just like that, they're in field goal range. Second charge. And Coach Maynard's upset seconds. again, and I'm Italy. not quite sure why. They are He's in been great upset the whole here. afternoon. They are in great shape right now. S Steve, any Steve, any idea of what, what Coach Maynard's upset there about? I, I tell you, they are absolutely poised right here. We heard him talking about control coming into this game and being disciplined. They look disciplined. But, guys, before the game, when we were on the field, we did not see their kicker attempt at this end zone. He was kicking the ball with the wind at the other goalpost. So maybe he got some in that we didn't see. But, again, Spencer Corey, we did not see him go in this direction. But all conditions are all set for him to make it. And you see A&M is playing for the field goal, keeping the ball in the middle of the field. That's a good point, Steve. Thank you. Want to clean something up? 80 was Cam Young two plays ago with that reception to help A&M march down the field. Now 16 seconds to go. One timeout. Glass caught Hilaire. First down inside the 20. Clock is at 11. Once they spot the ball, the clock will start again. And Glass clocks it with nine remaining. They are in field goal range. Spencer Corey, career long is 44. Start the play clock. There he is on the sideline. So with nine seconds and the timeout in their hip pocket, Connell Manor is going to try and get it even closer for his field goal kicker. You take a shot it's of a the end zone? This is a calculated gamble right here. What do you do? Timeout. Alabama A&M does the third and final charge. Yeah, well, yes, what? Seconds. Now Finley. you kick the field goal. Take he the time out to talk all. about it. All right, so Morehouse took the lead with a minute to go on the Dunn touchdown to go up 30 to 28. But after this touchdown, Estelle Lamora missed the extra point wide left. And what could have been a three-point game is now a two-point game. And with nine seconds to go, it could be up to the other kicker. It will be up to the other kicker, Spencer Quarry. All this after a decision earlier to not go for two, to take an extra point. That one was good, Charles. But, but a lot of coaches had the philosophy of I only go for two when I have to. I don't chase points early. And you have to remember when they scored, there was still about 12 minutes to go in the ball game. So a lot of coaches don't do it at that point. Rich Freeman elected not to. But look at this. No timeouts left, and they still got the offense out on the field. This is a gutsy play. Something goes wrong here. Clock could run out on him. Let's see what Glass does. Akil Glass will throw end zone. And Jenkins has it for the touchdown with three seconds to go 20 yards 
and Alabama A&M has the lead 34 to 30. You want to talk about a gutsy call, a gutsy throw? And what a play by Brian Jenkins. A beautiful throw by Akil Glass. Well played. That play was well designed, and they had the confidence to run that with no timeouts left. Anything goes wrong, they probably don't get the last opportunity to kick the field goal. They put all their eggs in that basket and made it pay off. And poor Morehouse. After what they did, now you got one return left to go. But boy, what, after what Morehouse did, they have it come down to this. Well protected, well thrown, caught. And I will tell you, you know I was advocating the field goal because I don't like taking a chance with no timeouts in my pocket. Connell Maynard, we've known him for a lot of years, Andrew. Mm -hmm. This fits his personality perfectly. Jenkins got behind Vanover, who is a track guy, who's 100-meter champion wearing five, and got behind Gibson as well. And you see the reaction from the A&M sideline. You put it in the hands of your quarterback, and your quarterback made a play. Brian Jenkins, 12th catch of the day is a touchdown. He's been impossible to take down the entire day. He was impossible to cover there. Well, Steve Weish had a great interview with Connell's college coach, Bill Hayes, member of the Black College Football Hall of Fame. And he said that this was a staple. When you've got a hot hand, Connell will keep going to him. Almost like basketball, where you call your sets for your best score. And he did that with Brian Jenkins. He did it with Zabrian Moore. And then leading down to Keel Glass, but he was on he was on his back all day long, and boy did he come through for his coach. I'll be honest, that looked like a play out of the Arena League where Connell Maynard was a champion. Squib kick. Need a miracle now. Done. Can't get a handle. Now he picks it up. Needs some trickery. It's not going to work. A.J. Smith brought down, and that is how Brian Jenkins and Alabama A&M stun Morehouse. Beat him for the 16th consecutive time, and do so with a touchdown and a gutsy call with three seconds on the clock. Rich Freeman's Morehouse team almost had an opening week upset over a SWAC team. A stunner for a D2 team again was not to be, despite a valiant effort in the second half by number 11 there, Jalen Brown, the quarterback off the bench. What a competitive game. I mean, absolute two teams competing their hearts out and took it all the way to the wire. Wasn't the most artistic success at times with the number of penalties, but you cannot doubt that both of these teams came here with the idea they were going to walk out with a W. Charles, we're calling this the classic. We just got a classic. We got an instant classic ending, didn't we? Yes, we did. When Connell Maynard, who is always fiery, and today was no different. I mean, it was hot out here in the stadium, and he was hot for most of the day on the sideline. I, I could not believe when he sent his offense back out there. But it worked. It worked. Because Akeel Glass made a heck of a throw. And Brian Jenkins got loose as he has been the entire afternoon. What a game, Steve Weich. Absolutely. I'm here with the winning head coach, Connell Maynard. Coach, nine seconds left, all set up for a field goal. Why did you go for that shot? You got to. That's why you play the games. You play the games to win. You don't want to leave it in the field goal. Uh, you know, it's 50-50 there on the field goal. Anything can happen. Bad snap, bad hole. Uh, and he just missed the ball. So you got to go for it. You got uh, you throw a pass. If we complete it, we win the game. If not, we kick and win the game. What about the composure your quarterback showed on that last drive? You get it back with a minute and nine seconds left. You push it down the field, and he throws that dandy for the game winner. Uh, that's why we play. We practice. I told the guys before 
that play. I said, this is what we practice every day. Hurry, hurry for these, these situations. Stay calm, execute, and we'll be fine. And Brian Jenkins was spectacular this game. You went to him over and over, and you called his number to seal the deal. What about this performance? That's what you do. You get the ball to your best players. We put it in my quarterback hand and my best wide receiver hand, and they came through. All right, Coach, they call this game a classic, as our host Andrew Siciliano just said. This was a classic. Here's the man right here, real quick. Young man on this touchdown, the game winner. What about that play? A coach got a great play. A quill made a great throw, and we just won. There's nothing else to it. We just won. All right, there it is. Congratulations, Alabama a and Thank you, everybody. Go Fantastic Bulldogs. game. Go Bulldogs. We got a lot of work to do. <laughs> what a game. Glass Jenkins touchdown at a 35-30 Charles Davis final score. Fantastic start to the Black Football Classic here in Canton, Ohio. Can't wait to next year. Howard, Central State of Ohio. I'm fired up. Let's do it. Let's come back and do it again yeah, next why year, not? shall this, we? This was, this was a terrific opening gambit for this. This was outstanding, and I think people can't wait to come back here. And I know Howard and Central State, they can't wait to be here. It is the start of what we have no doubt will be a fantastic tradition. Coming up next, Orangeburg, an important and incredible story you do not want to miss. For Charles Davis and for Steve White, I'm Andrew Siciliano. Thank you so much for watching the inaugural Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic here in Canton, Ohio. For producers Alan Flowers, Fran Morrison, director Mike Roth as well. Final score, 35 to 30. A win for Alabama A&M. So long, everybody. Acts are unwelcome. I have my own customers that patronize me 52 weeks a year. An activist comes to campus. You want to tie into athletes who are already organized. And the football team takes a stand. If we wanted to go bowling, why not go bowling? South Carolina. I hope you won't dislike me for involving the students in particular the athletes, I said, you will have no problem with me. Coming up, the students take action. We had leaders on campus who took the attitude that it's time to do something, it's time to act. And pay the price. Oh man, there were at least three to one. The officer tried to hurt us. I mean, they, they were swinging those clubs like, I mean, crazy, man. Ready to upgrade your appliances? Today is the day for doing. Because the Home Depot makes it easy to save now, compare options, and fuel your team for less. Shop hundreds of special buys.